Hey man, get ready for Film School Fridays where I'm just going to talk about filmmakers and the movies they make that I love every week. And uh, with uh, with Jake, with Luke, uh, with Vinny, with my friends. I'm saying them like they're rock stars. They will be by the time you listen to this goddamn podcast. But uh, if you want to hear more of that Kevin Smith, and who the fuck doesn't want to? Uh, if you're like my mother and you're like, my God, I can't get enough of this guy's voice. Come on, join us over at That Kevin Smith Club, man. ThatKevinSmithClub.com. I do a morning show five days a week, Wake and Bake, man, where I just literally wake up, smoke weed, and just talk at you and shit. Uh, If if you're looking to throw a few uh, bucks my way for this free podcast you're about to enjoy, jump on over to That Kevin Smith Club uh, and join up right now, man. Be a clerk, a mall rat, a fun employee, or a yoga hoser. That's right. I made the highest level of fucking my least popular movie. That's how I roll. That Kevin Smith Club.com, ladies and gentlemen. And now, Thumb School Fridays. is back in session welcome to film school fridays i'm your host kevin smith uh here we go into episode two uh with me as uh, as last week is jake weisman jake s weisman yep J- you use the s i do use the s there's another jake weisman out there leave off the s for pretension what is that all about what's with the I, s? I, there's a guy who had a uh, comedy central show really? and his name is jake weisman so i was like just have it um so the s is the the adam f goldberg of it all yeah it's the um david x cohen of it all fair enough um but this week joining us uh luke uh works with us here at smodco also working with us here at smodco if you've ever ordered a fucking thing he probably he's the he's the conduit man if you were like oh my god that fucking sw- sweet ass watch was fucking bam he was your guy if you're like oh my god the fucking movie pop the Jay, Silent Bob Reboot Pops. Oh, he was your guy. He was your conduit. He was your pusher, man. Uh, give it up for Luke Taylor. Hey, how's it going? Luke uh, is a filmmaker as well. Yes. I have, I have a name distinction, too, in my film life. I, I use my full name. Like, when I do... Uh, like, is my, that true? Look at yeah, you two fucking you frauds. We're late, we're well, late in the game. Because, it's not like a Lars von Trier thing. Well, it's like, <laughs> that's exactly what's going on. Well, I mean, I, I think that's just his name, right? No, it's not. The Vaughn is not his name. His name is Lars Trier, and he was such a pretentious asshole in film school that they gave him the Vaughn, and he took it. That's true? That's the story that I know. It's never what I, I think mean. Of. Boy, you came well, with it with such authority. I've and read certainty. it. Certainty. I'm like, my God, that must be His true. Hands are I, thrown I, up I now mean, as, if, <laughs> as if caught, as if like, no, um. I he, believe but, it, but, but if Lars von Trier comes after me, like, I don't know. Uh, like, isn't he like Dutch or something? Like, does, he's Icelandic. And isn't Vaughn a thing? Then? Vaughn means, um, like royalty or something like that. So he's like a count. So his name was Lars Trier, and they were like, you're such a, you think so highly of yourself. We'll call you Lars von Trier. And then he went ahead, Una reversed it and said, fine, that's fine by me. Is that what they're teaching in film school these days? I mean. Not in mine. I, I he, didn't know about this. Like, well, they, 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 said a lot of 90s, others, they said like, a lot of other stuff about Lars I've been around Trier. since <laughs> the 90s and never heard this. I thought that was his fucking name. But, you know, it could be in an era of uh, the information highway when. You know, Lars von Trier is forever fixed in in my perception, but yeah. perhaps I'm not, you know, a member of that Lars von Trier club or something <laughs> like that. Right. So I'm not equally. It's called Dogma 95. So they're doing true, <laughs> but I mean, maybe I'm not as as like I didn't keep my finger on the pulse. Maybe that's something that broke later. But like, you know what? I ha- if that you ask me for a source. Apocryphal. Well, Kev, you have an you have an, a, a producer on Clerks Three. That's Luke Taylor. So like on your call yeah. sheet. So like when I was like starting my career not so long ago, right? Uh, I had to like seek that out and be like, are there other Luke Taylors? Well, and I get there confused. Was m- more than one. No, there's no Lucas Guy Taylor. That's just me. So, so you go by professionally Lucas Guy Taylor. Yeah, it sounds douchey, doesn't it? Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's just like it's. It seems like the opposite. It seems very pronouny because you're like Lucas Guy. 
so worried. Taylor. It seems the Don't opposite of pronoun. It seems like you're like making fun of pronouns. Almost. Where you're like, I'm going to declare that I'm a man, Lucas. Just so you know. I'm a little bit like behind the curve. On Luke that has a, an adorable little sidebar story. Luke uh, got married how long ago? Uh, So August 2020. 88 so, 2020. Oh my God. In the midst of the fucking pandemic. Yeah. Um, uh, Luke uh, last name as we know uh, Taylor whether it's Guy Taylor or just Taylor <laughs> Taylor is always in play um, Luke met uh, a, a beautiful girl who um, has a name I, I'm trying to set it up properly but I'm too stoned <laughs> uh, Luke met a girl named Taylor correct and go figure she fell for Luke enough to be like I will share my life with you and change my name to, to yours. Although professionally, does she keep her old name? Or no, not? she goes Taylor Taylor. It was like, honestly, I had a little bit Taylor of a merging of fucking Taylor. Jordan Monsanto. Like that, before that, we were married, she's like, she has to change her name. That kid <laughs> is, uh, I mean, that's, that's, that, that, what a fucking Taylor squared. That's fantastic. <laughs> Yeah. Um, there was there ever a moment of hesitation where she's like, I'm not, I can't fucking marry you <gasps> because of the last name. She didn't really, uh, no, not on that <laughs> part, but she didn't tell me she was going to officially change it or anything like, so for the longest time, I assumed she would just like keep it or some people said a hyphen, but now she went ahead and did the whole, the whole thing. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor. Taylor. Her license says Taylor Taylor. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I mean, and that's everything a man we've done since. with a dick so powerful <laughs> <laughs> that he, that he made a woman go like, yeah. I will make a pun of my name yeah. from now until the fucking grave. I know. That's I, love, dude. My dick's got a good personality. <laughs> it's, it's, it's one of those things. Um, the boys here know each other. Uh, as is often the case, everyone's like, you know, in this business. It literally is. Uh, Luke's Very been much. working with us for a while, and then we were like, we need help. And so I assume you're the one that brought in Jake. Yeah, from the from the clutches of uh, the Midwest. And you guys met each other how, when? Is this a film thing or no? Not Honestly, not at all. Well, so in you're a way. two filmmakers from Chicago yeah. who met out here? No. Do okay. you want to tell it? You want me to do it? Uh, I mean, I, I'm happy to. I mean, Right now, every fucking Snyderverse fan is like, fucking move really on! <laughs> <Amen>. But... <laughs> but as we all know, Secret Origins. I have more Lars von Trier anecdotes for all of you. <laughs> fans, of, fans of Snyder know that we did like three different origin movies in this four hour movie, so they can chill. They, oh, they, they're very patient. And let me patient. tell you, if you're a Snyderverse kid, oh my God, I, I suspect you're going to delight uh, from today's show. This isn't like uh, sitting on Fat Man Beyond where Mark tries to politically, delicately. <laughs> talk about his feelings for uh zach snyder's justice league uh we'll be doing a, a dive on uh zach snyder's justice league uh, tonight with somebody who has wept through it i mean i mean, I mean I, i've cried through it as well i would say twice. i mean at, at the very least metaphorically right like i mean i've literally look, cried when he fucking gets to the as much as i don't want to when he gets to the dad oh part which i want to make fun of is like oh that sounds like fucking sophia coppola as she's dying and got fell through, she's like, Dad. <laughs> but like when he gets to the light, you know, once he starts telling the speech, that that's pretty fucking moving. Um, there, you know, what is it? There's something. Oh, fucking, it is crazy moving when the little girl with the perfectly fucking shot eyes, like just the right fucking light he's got in her eyes, is looking up at, at Wonder Woman, oh. going like. Can I be you someday? Oh, without a doubt. And you're like, oh my God. That fucking, my, my wife is one of the coldest human beings <laughs> I've ever met. That makes her cry. And she was, literally, I, I just rewatched it today before we did the show. And she rolled by for the Wonder Woman Park. She's like, oh my God, I fucking love this. It, or so much so that she's like, we love this, right? And I'm like, yes, we do. <laughs> um, we love all of this. You are very selective. You're column A, column B. But when it gets to that part, she like clutch her fucking chest and. Her eyes were fucking wet. She was like, <gasps> um, and just that whole sequence, that fucking Wonder Woman sequence is one of the greatest superhero sequences of all time. We're going to talk about Zack Snyder's Justice League uh, momentarily once we get past this origin story. Um, but uh, first, back to you guys. How is it that you know each other? So we did meet in Chicago. I, w I went to Chicago from like small town. So I'm from Canton, Illinois. Then bounced around to like Macomb, right? Yeah, I didn't know that. I thought you were Chicago. Well, 
at once you're from Chicago and you go to LA, you just say Chicago. Man, you're not, you're, you're not from Chicago either. You're Vermont, right? I'm from Vermont, but I spent half my life in Vermont, half my life in Chicago. Fair. You know what I mean? So I went to uh, <coughs> college at Western, then went to film school for grad school or whatever, uh, moved to Chicago for that. And then nice. when I was there, needed a job, uh, lived in the uh, neighborhood at the very top of Chicago. There was a small independently run movie theater called the new 400 Jake's working there. Uh, the uh, the GM at the time was from where I went to college. She helped get me the gig, mm. uh, and then we just kind of became buds from there. We were a couple of clerks, honestly. If you're gonna turn to look at him lovingly as you tell the story, you got to remember that you're, you got to stay know on. You know what's, you know what's funny is like I've listened to like <laughs> so many pods of you, and I even at home I was like, make sure you talk in the mic. Cause my suggestion, say something. my suggestion will be this: <laughs> we just, just turn. Yeah, the, or, I mean, yeah, just turn it that way because you're. It seems like you want to look. Got a dynamic. It's yeah, hard not to look your chair. Too, you, I know. I just know it'll screech as soon as I do it. Oh my god! Fucking the dog was just fucking barking feel free to move the chair i know Uh, Um, but yeah so uh, happenstance what's fun that's that's the connection that's yeah the movie theater to take it even further back like for people who are like how do you get a job in that organization once again it it really helps it's who you know you came to us luke by way by weird way yeah of smash of ashley who used to be my assistant like who fucking drove me around and stuff like that Mm -hmm. you know uh she, everyone knows fucking Smashley from the podcast and stuff. Well, maybe not from this podcast. Ashley Green, not to be confused with the Ashley Green from fucking Twilight. Not that one. <laughs> uh, Ashley used to be my assistant, drove me around forever and ever and stuff. Um, she told Jordan, oh, there's a guy who's in town who she didn't necessarily know you. No. But her friend Marissa was the connection yeah i'm like third hand from ashley in a weird way it all traces back to her her and marissa knew each other from vegas right uh i met marissa when i moved to chicago in film school and she was like oh my god my friend ashley is kevin smith's assistant you're a kevin smith fan i was like yeah fuck yeah <laughs> that's really sweet she's like yeah many rolls of joints i'm like very cool uh that's why it's kind of bizarre <laughs> that was that a job yeah. i was like hey, here we are so uh that was really strange and when she she went she came out here a little bit before me i left chicago a little bit after mm. uh and i just you know i didn't have a gig out or, out here or anything me and taylor had just gotten engaged and we were like you know taylor's an actor i'd gotten my master's at DePaul in screenwriting i'd i'd already made a feature at that point so i was ready to come out here and try it out and um marissa happened to like have an interview with jordan mm. um like a week after i got here uh and then it ended up being like here's the gig marissa ended up being busy with some other stuff and like i got a text from jordan like that day so i'd been in la for like 11 days holy shit Uh, i mean with no money and like we had an apartment and taylor was like teaching kids like in china at night like on skype at like 3 a.m and that was her only source of income and it was a total luck like i mean total stroke of luck and happenstance and also sure like who you know um, that i got passed along i interviewed with rebecca like that day um and he's been with us ever since uh luke as previously mentioned professionally goes by lucas guy taylor yeah um has directed and recently directed a short film with taylor taylor in it acting and then and um you got a geriatric uh fucking <laughs> one of those old timer fucking actors that like oh where's that motherfucker been pull him out of mothballs <laughs> to give a performance for you yeah i mean he, he's old man i couldn't believe it you look great the short <laughs> film is called the bleed purple <laughs> And you've just been started, like, it's been playing festivals, right? Yeah, we're starting to get in. We uh, They love Kev in Japan. Like, we played in Japan last weekend, and you won Best Actor at, this, at the Top Indie Film Awards. Come on. Uh, I'm fucking packing it up in here. I'm moving to Japan. I'm become telling you, a, like dude. a local actor there, Oh, man. man. Get real. We got to get that plaque up in here Do they somewhere. have ganja in Japan? I mean. No, I think it's very illegal. I think it's very illegal as well. Among other things. You know what, kids? I'm back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we're back. We're back. Um, um, but yeah, and so we're getting into some things. We got into like the Oregon Short Festival, and we're playing at Love Your Shorts in Florida, and we've applied to so many others. So it's it's been a ball. But um, I mean, it couldn't happen without you, man. Without I mean, Stop. on on one end, just to like you know, it literally couldn't happen. It literally, without you. I was a guy who was just like, oh, I'll be in it. Yeah, I mean, you literally like it doesn't work without you, and and not only that, but like no, you could it sh- literally doesn't work without you. I, I you could have filled my role any number of ways. This is beautiful. I love to, this. Uh, I this appreciate is how we pass the buck. <laughs> well, I'm just saying, like when you like you could show up and just be there, but you knocked it out of the fucking park, man. No, like you've beautiful. like truly anybody that's time. seen it is like. 
holy shit, silent, silent he is not. Silent <laughs> Bob he isn't. Like, I, I gave you a million words to say, and you absolutely, like, elevated it. I always love that because it's, you know, it's a nice, like, um, oh, this is what, it, like, it could have been, like, if I just did that. Like, if I just said words. Yeah. As opposed to, like, wrote words or fucking didn't say words because, like, I'm you know, I was like, well, I'll be silent Bob. But um, it was fun. It was absolutely fun to do. Now, uh, and that's to set the stage to tell you that uh, we got some cineasts, not just some armchair cineasts, film Twitter, you know, some <laughs> uh, two cats who are like, I like movies as much as the next guy. This is my letterbox to count. I'm talking about they actually have made, you've made a film. I've got a feature. And I What's it sure. called? My feature is called Break. It, you can watch it on Amazon Prime. Jesus. Starring uh, Taylor Shepard at the time, Taylor Taylor now, and then my buddy Arif Ampolsky, uh, Kelsey Bunner, who I also helped kind of hang. She worked for us this summer. Yeah. Uh, she produced Bleed Purple as well. That's a Canton kid for where I'm from. I keep just bringing everybody I've ever met into your company. Keep it local. Uh, and whatnot. So that's there. And then we made, uh, I shot a short right in Rogers Park called Winnie and Charlotte's Last Night at the Oasis. It's also on Amazon Prime. Um, and you've shot a feature as well. We talked about last I week. I shot two features. Two features. Where can they see them? Or, the, or is there no Amazon Prime? No, there? you can watch my first one, Scraper, is on Amazon. Uh, is that a thing with the kids now? You just put it up. I, on listen, well, it's, it's a going very, away now. We hit the. We were right at the, the the spike, and I stole it from him. It's a storied kind of a thing where we were there, like Luke said, we were there at the exact perfect moment where they were trying to get people onto Amazon. And this is really an episode in and of itself, so I'll keep it really quick. They were, uh, but it was like after one festival, they were like, you know what? Everyone who uh, didn't get into the festival. We'll give you ten thousand dollars. You can have. Uh, you can upload onto Amazon. Are you shitting? Me? And they were like, "No," because I spent five million dollars on my movie. Ten thousand dollars is nothing. Well, me, I'm like, shit. Like, w- let's make a movie for ten thousand dollars and see what we can do. Smart. Now the that uh, award wasn't there because that's part of the festival thing. Mm. That being said, they were letting people just upload their shit and make money like it was Spotify. Right. That being said, once they bought bond and kind of are like they're like you know what unless you're making us money you can't keep your shit on here is that right yes sir so i remember the early days of prime where it was like like i remember for some reason we talked about putting (coughs) hollywood babylon upon sure prime or something like that but um wow that is uh, familiar so it can't be done anymore. I don't know if you can upload. It's just it. What what it is is that my movie's on there. You have to rent it for three ninety nine, or, or no, you rent it for two ninety nine, or mm. buy it for three ninety nine. We get to set the price. Um, that's something I stole from Tusk actually, because that was the the one dollar price difference got me to buy Tusk as opposed to rent Tusk, and I was nice. like, I'm gonna steal that. Nice. Um, but uh, you can't be streaming free on prime so people were watching my shit because they were like they're scrolling around they find break they're sure. scrolling around they find winnie and charlotte and it's a cool piece of art and you click on it and wow you get some minutes once you actually have to start paying for something that you've never heard of before right. that's when things start getting kind of dead so i don't i haven't been paying attention they like lately. pulled us down like you know you we had the blue check mark like when we right when we uploaded like his feature first and i stole it from him and did it with my feature uh-huh. all you have to do is pay the money to some service for them to do your closed captioning. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So as long as you have the closed captioning file and submit the proper like files of art and your flick, you're good to go. But they pulled a lot of that stuff away from like, and now it's a paywall. And then like, I swear to God, it was like two weeks after I posted my short. Like it wasn't too long after I started for Smodco. They were like, no more shorts. Yeah. And also no documentaries. Like nobody. Really? And uh, so like my short lived on prime for like a week. And now it's like, my four minute shorts behind like a 99 cent paywall it's like never gonna happen but right. it feels legitimate if you say amazon prime doesn't it, it does. you, you like, up, i'm you know? impressed yeah. i've been in this business nearly 30 years i'm like you're on prime what are you yeah. doing working for me I doesn't it sound cool you. doesn't yeah. it sound cool that's <laughs> imagine how it was four years ago when we were telling everyone oh and you can see you know the trailer and our names and everything like that. that all you need to do is tell people you're on amazon prime so that's pretty cool my other feature is on it's serialized on youtube mm-hmm. Um, and it's called Clean Sheets. You Snyder cutted it. You put it into chapters of after the fact. You li- li- I did. Snyder. I I I have a feature version of it. If you go to Jelly Roll to <laughs> JellyRollChicago.com and go to my Vimeo, you can watch everything for free. Um, and that's I have the feature, and it's I didn't get a chance to finish shooting it, so it's only sixty five minutes long, but it is a feature. Oh, and it's you just not... totally disclaimed it. Don't disclaim it. Oh, I didn't cut, mean to. Cut, cut that. I didn't cut, mean cut to. That. It's, it's a great film. It is so adorable listening to the next generation of filmmakers. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so that's just a long way of saying uh, the kids have credentials. Uh, a lot of people talk about film when they uh, have an opinion that differs from somebody else. One of the first go-to defenses, criticisms, put-downs is like, where's your fucking movie? Well, <laughs> when you disagree with whatever the boys say on the episode, hold your, well, where's your fucking movie? You now know yep. where their movies yep. are. Go Thanks, give us boss. that one star review on Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> like, this fucking kid loves hey, X Men. Still ratio me. this shit. <laughs> yeah, fucking welcome to my world. Um, <laughs> all right, kids, let's get to it because there are a bunch of hungry Snyderverse fans who are like, "Are you kidding me?" Insatiable. Stop fucking talking about each other and talk about Zach. <laughs> it's very easy to talk about Zach. Zach is one of the most lovable filmmakers I ever met in my life, and bar none, one of the ten most talented. Um, when I watch a Zack Snyder film, it is, uh, it, it leaves me with the distinct impression like, oh, I'm a tourist <laughs> and have been for many years. I make movies. He makes movies. You know what I'm saying? So he's one of those filmmakers. He's like a, a Spielberg, a Nolan, a Rodriguez, uh, Tarantino, where you're like, were these fuckers born with a camera in their hands when they come out the womb? Were they born wearing jodhpurs and a fucking tilted beret <laughs> and fucking with a megaphone in hand? <laughs> so um, that just goes without saying. And, uh, you know, I think he, like for most people, for me, I know he did a bunch of commercial work, but he popped up on my radar with Dawn of the Dead, which is a ballsy entree. You know, I mean, I'm sure he's not like, that's the one I'm picking. That's fortune came his way and they were like, hey, do you want to take a stab at this? And he had an original take on it, you know, uh, along with the screamer. I'm sure that somebody else wrote the screen. Oh, wasn't it fucking it was Gun. Gun. It was James Gunn's yeah. screenplay. That's right. Oh, it my was. God. It was so same, you're already loaded for bear winner. with fucking James Gunn screenplay. Same weekend as Scooby-Doo that he wrote. The fuck? Good they both Lord. came out? Like, like around the same time. What happened to James Gunn? He what? was, uh, he was living know. so he's high He's a trauma on guy. Yeah, <laughs> and now he's just a trauma guy. Sorry. Forever a trauma guy. Yeah, poor guy. So um, Dawn of the Dead is incredibly ballsy because uh, you're talking to a 70s kid who literally watched Dawn of the Dead happen. Unlike y'all when you were still just fucking coming balls and eggs and whatnot. <laughs> I was literally rewatching fucking George Romero to make this brilliant movie about not just a horror movie, but oh my God, fucking zombies in bed. And this time it's an enclosed structure and it ain't black and white. Fucking A. Like these zombies are in color. And it's also kind of funny. There's some funny shit going on. I'm young and I could still understand social commentary of like this taking place in a fucking shut down mall and don't think it wasn't influential. <laughs> I did wind up shooting eventually, <laughs> you know, at the Monroeville mall. That's right. So as a long way of saying, there's a high bar if you're going to make a picture like Dawn of the Dead um, and win me over. You know what I'm saying? You did. It's a wonderful movie. Like it does, does nothing to discredit George Romero's classic and becomes an instant classic in and of itself. And right then and there, I'm like, my God, what a filmmaker to pay attention to. Next up was 300. Yeah. That's that's the one. I mean, like... That's the one that, that is as bad as I felt watching Dawn of the Dead going like, yeah, I ain't no filmmaker. When I saw 300, I was like, <laughs> good Christ. <laughs> good Christ. Am I even the same breathing, living animal, the same species as this man? <laughs> um, he was able to take a Frank Miller comic, bro. A Frank Miller book. Not just a comic book, but a Frank Miller comic book. And not just like, hey, Sin City. But fucking 300, which, you know, simple, straightforward story that's been told before. But Frank's telling of it, it, it you know, it was beautiful. But at the same time, it's not like, oh, this is going to be accessible to everybody. You know, it, it fucking felt like breathing rarefied air. And Zach comes along and makes this sumptuous, gorgeous, living comic book version of a movie. True graphic novel come to life and establishes the style that he'll work in for the rest of his career. Especially when it comes at least to the, these comic book flicks. he He's a splash pager. When you're reading a comic book and you get to a single page where there's just a stunning image, not a series of panels, as a splash page. When you get to two of them side by side, it's a double splash page, man. Usually reserved for incredible group shots, credit pages, something stunning. A stunning visual that's going to impact and just sear itself uh, in the mind of the viewer, the reader. 
That's how Zach works. Every fucking frame is a fucking splash page. Like, no panels in a Zack Snyder uh, comic book movie. And that was established as early on as fucking 300, uh, which was a huge fucking hit. Dawn of the Dead was a big hit, too. But, like, 300 was like, what? So, after 300, what happens? What does he do? Uh, does it, what, is it Gaul? Which one? Sucker Punch and the birds say, and I, the owls of Gaul. I know that Sucker Punch was, yeah. Sucker right. Punch is a hard watch. Right in there. Stunning, though. Like, I remember oh, seeing yeah. the trailer and being like, this guy cracked the code. Like, holy shit. He just yeah. reinvented cinema. And then when you see the movie, I mean, there's a lot of interesting ideas, and but still visually stunning. Well, I feel like the crux of this episode and the crux of all this is that when I watched a lot of these movies, I didn't know that there were these other cuts. Mm. So the four hour Watchmen, Watchmen. That's four, what we're so missing. We're sitting here being like, what was it? Yeah, the four I mean, hour Watchmen. The whole where they audience have, is like, Watchmen, oh you fucks. God. Right now, they've disavowed us. <laughs> this conversation. We're working dead. on it. We're I getting know. there. Yeah. Um, I finally got to watch the version with like the animated Gerard Butler uh, comic thing. And yeah. it's, it's a beautiful. I love the four hour version. And uh, I wasn't crazy about BVS. We'll get to that. Then Luke turned me on to it, turned me on to the extended cut of it. And boy, do I enjoy that. So it all leads to the Snyder cut, I feel. And, you know, 300 is absolutely seminal. And um uh, I'm going to take you back to Watchmen, because Watchmen yeah. is where I crossed paths with Zach for the first time. I was on a panel in the year that it was uh, going to be coming out. And so it was uh, Mark Bernardin, Fat Man Beyond. Hell yeah. <laughs> was working at Entertainment Weekly and programmed this panel. Uh, fuck, I forget what it was. I want to say icons, but I don't know if that's it. It might be a little too self-important. But it was like the idea is here's some fucking heavy hitters in the, in the genre. And it was, uh, for me, a fortuitous seat of because it put me up there with like Apatow, who was like fucking just broke huge as Apatow at that moment. Zack Snyder, who was just dropping the trailer for Watchmen at that fucking San Diego Comic Con. <laughs> Frank Miller. Oh my God. Um, and me. <clears throat> and I can't remember if there was somebody else, but if I forgot somebody, apologies. It's but a good group. It's a pretty fucking stellar group. And, uh, and so, um, I got to blow up Zach there backstage about like that trailer because they dropped the trailer with the uh, the uh, what is it? Bl- not bl- uh, Smashing Pumpkins song. Oh, okay. That was like the first trailer that they dropped, and you know, it for, as somebody who's a longtime Watchmen reader and lover, stunning because you were like, Jesus, he did it! Like same way he did three hundred, he's like literally doing fucking like gibbons and more right. or gibbons because more doesn't like to be associated with it outside <laughs> of the original medium so uh, you know i i told him backstage i was like oh, i gave him a big hug I, t- I think i talked to him i said it on the panel but i was like you were doing the lord's work man that shit looks astounding and it delivered i loved the watch movie some people had an issue with the ending because it didn't have the giant squid i thought their fix was totally fucking good like i didn't bump into it nice. as much as some people did i love don't get me wrong i love the hbo watchman oh, series God, me too. It was absolutely fucking brilliant but there you go you like with any comic book adaptation and i think that's going to be at the root of our discussion today you have source material being filtered through the prism of so many different artists and in this tribal society we have, pop culture society, um, where people are like, this is mine, this is what I identify with, and that means that any other iteration of this fucking blows and is against what I stand for. It's tough for people to kind of maybe take the perspective that I've had as a longtime comic book fan, and, and that's usually the prism through which I view Zach's uh, DC movies. There are so many iterations of these characters that can be done. So many different permutations. I'm used to that from the world of comics because in Detective, Batman was handled one way. In Batman comics, he was handled another way. In fucking Keith Giffen's Justice League, there were jokes. Like, you know, no matter which filter it's going through... There's a different iteration of the character, but I was never like, well, fuck this. I mean, look, I'll be honest. I was a bit judgy 
about some art, man. I don't know why, but I would give Jim Aparo a real hard time. He's a classic Batman artist. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, I was always like, this looks like coloring book Batman. Cause I was looking for like, you know, I was schooled on Frank Miller, Dark Knight. So I'm like, give me something dramatic. Mike Mignola fucking Batman right. covers from, you know, death in the family. But I definitely grew to love Jim Aparo stuff. Um, however, you know, it, we all have tastes. We all have preference and whatnot. But I learned how to appreciate everyone's different takes on a character and not be like, you know, be like, this is the one I prefer. But they're all there's room for everything. And I appreciate a b- bunch of different takes. So I grew up watching the Superman. You know, I grew up watching the black and white one on TV and reruns as a child and then Super Friends. And then, of course, the Dick Donner movies and forward. Um, you know, so I, I there, there's a, a famously I worked on a version of Superman that never happened. Um, but something about that or infamously, I should yeah. say. <laughs> so, you know, there's a oh, I know what a Superman movie is. And then Zach makes Man of Steel. And it's like. This is also a Superman movie. And for some people, it's a generational divide where they're like, well, fucking that ain't my Superman. And it's like, well, I mean, look, that ain't the Superman I grew up with, but fucking any Superman better than no Superman. And I'm interested in alternative take. Zach's take was always meant to be. What if this shit was real? And that's the prism he puts everything through and appreciated that way. You know, it, 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 it's not very controversial. But because we live in such a, a very pop culturally tribal culture, um, it's, it's divisive. You can't just like a fucking thing right. without hating a thing at the same time. I come from a different place where, look, I'll take a different fucking take on Batman every day from a different artist, you know, across the boards that there these characters be them uh, dc marvel and let's just keep it there um because the star wars line is a very specific story being told but the dc characters and marvel characters quite like your biblical characters or your greek mythological characters you know can be used to interpret different moral stories uh you know different can be interpreted differently through every teller. Nobody does it the same fucking way. You know, I remember when they were teaching us the Greek myths, they left out a lot of the fucking, you know, and then Zeus turned into a fucking rainstorm and fucked a goat in front of a woman because that's the way he rolled. You know, that's a true story. (laughs) Yeah, as true as the Lars von Trier. (laughs) So at the end of the day, it's like sometimes you leave this off, you leave this off or whatever. But like, you know, these characters are so big that they can be handled by multiple storytellers and told in many different ways. And I still appreciate them all. Like, you know, I mean, Zach's take on the DC universe um, is is very auteur driven, whereas let's say the. You know, the Justice League that most folks are used to is the DC animated series or, or and or the Super Friends, if you count that from back in the day. Um, you know, you get a little bit on the Smallvilles of this world and the Arrowverses that, as they bring people together. But generally speaking, let's leave it to the cartoon. Cartoon is fantastic. Um, and, you know, it is built by auteurs, so to speak, the same team. A lot of the same team that brought together Batman, the animated series. But then in order for a thing like that to work, it has to be generic enough that anybody can jump into the lead roles and the show can go on. So we're used to a more and I this is not meant to be dismissive because I worship at the fucking altar of the Justice League cartoon. But that's a, a, a a mainstream and or and i don't mean this in a negative way generic take on the material generic meaning i could hire luke to write an episode i can hire luke to write an episode i pointed at jake jake to write an episode (laughs) and then i can hire other people to write an episode and they'll all feel the same because 
let's say Jake's like, well, I brought in some of my father issues. It's like, not not in this fucking show. <laughs> and that individuality gets hammered out and stuff. You know, in the case of Zach's movies, you're talking about as well, they're as auteur driven as it gets. As most people have thrown me into the auteur category my whole life, because like, oh, he's fucking, you could tell a fucking Kevin Smith movie. You know, they're all bad. But <laughs> he's same thing. He's like, you could tell, fucking Clinton takes his name off the credit. You could tell a Zack Snyder movie. Yeah. It's very auteur driven. Has been since he jumped in the driver's seat of even something like Dawn of the Dead. He put a signature style on it and built upon that signature style to get to the point where they were like here to big toys and then use that signature style on the big toys and it was met with mixed results like right down the middle it seemed like yeah and it was not as embraced he didn't have as easy a time of it as most of the marvel flicks had um you know the man of steel the take on man of steel was oh well, this is serious, and mo- and a lot of people got caught up on. Oh, he broke his fucking neck. Right. He killed Zod. You know, but it's like he killed Zod and Superman too as well. Right. Yeah. But he just you know didn't fucking snap his neck in front of a family. I guess maybe that grossed people out. Listen, and the, the utter destruction of Metropolis, the destruction porn, really seemed to rub people the wrong <laughs> way. As him and Zod. You know, it felt like, oh, the movie's over. And then there was another 20 minutes of like, we're going to beat the fuck out of each other until the city's destroyed. However, gave birth to, I mean, look, I love that movie. But it also gave birth to one of my favorite sequences of film of all time and one I watch over and over again. The opening of Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice, where you see the entire fucking sequence of Man of Steel from the ground, from Bruce Wayne's point of view. And as a real nerdy fuck, I'm like, (gasps) I... I had no idea when we were watching Man of Steel that he was too. And he was like in the same position as us. I mean, granted, he had a cooler car and he ran faster and he was at the center of danger. But he too was a witness to all of this. It's nuts. Um, so and he's got a friend named Jack. But that, that means a lot to him, Kevin. That, that's true. He's very passionate about Jack in the opening. As a big DC fan, I'm like, I couldn't have been somebody else. I'm, why couldn't that have been? Lucius. He's like, okay, well, but, but then, but then Zach's like, all right, fine, I'll use a DC character, and then, then Jimmy Olsen gets plugged, like, uh, like, like five minutes into the flick. So, what do you want? But to me, don't you think? Don't my take on Jimmy Olsen was he's a CIA agent, absolutely. So his the code name is Jimmy Olsen. Oh, I love. They had that. a Jenny Olsen in Superman and BVS, so they already have their. Huh. Olsen character. Copy. So to me, I didn't say like, oh, that was Jimmy Olsen. He fucking killed Jimmy Olsen. I mean, I didn't care. As a Jimmy Olsen fan, I did. (laughs) Um, I worked it out in my own head where I'm like, that's the guy is admitted CIA operative. He's not a fucking real photographer. So that can't be Jimmy Olsen. Yeah. That's his name. He picked a standard fucking name to be like, I'm Jimmy Olsen. Blowing my mind right now. That's just my, that's my theory. And I'm That's sure Zach, theory. where does Zach hang out? What's this thing? Vivo or whatever the fuck? It's, it, oh, what is It's like that. It's a social media. I don't even know what it is. It, yeah. it looks like Xanga or something. Wherever he hangs out, maybe he'll, he'll, he'll confirm or deny. Whether Someday. that theory works. He might just be like, no, that is Jimmy Olsen. I, I I'm sure somewhere I just up. wanted to kill Jimmy Olsen. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> which, like, look. Which, if he did, that's like, yeah, it's your prerogative. Like, you know, that's that's part of <laughs> part of the Uvar. I mean, the his idea going in, and I've read it many times, was he was just like, look, like, this is what would happen. Like, this, you know, if two gods fight, fucking the city gets destroyed, and that's what I like to play with. And, you know, these characters are huge metaphors, and, and you know, yeah, there's collateral damage. Otherwise, why the fuck do we need him? Like, he right. warrants the use of a superhero by destroying a city uh, by saying, like, look, without, what would it be like without these fucks? You know what I'm saying? So, it, it you know, it, it's extreme for some folks. But again, I... I just dial it back to, all right, so if I were to put this through the prism of my years of reading DC Comics, this is an extraordinary Elseworlds tale yeah. to me. Now, to some folks, they're like, that's the fucking canon. That's the fucking universe. Don't even talk like it's Elseworlds and shit like that. I ain't labeling it as such. I'm just saying <laughs> that's what a longtime reader that's how I fucking came to peace with it, where I was like, yeah, man, this is this is what you would do if you were like, give somebody the timeline and let them do whatever they want. And they keep close to the story, but 
their flourishes perhaps are a bit more dramatic, a bit more arch or a bit more, you know, extreme than, than the flourishes of, of others who've handled the material and stuff. You know, I, you know, I as a guy who was a big fan of, of course, like Adam West's Batman was the one I watched on TV growing up, but like when Tim Burton handled it in 1989, you know, could you imagine in if you left the theater in 19, in June 23rd, 1989, you just watched fucking Batman and somebody was like, come next door, I'm going to show you the future. And then they showed you this Batman. Oh my God. Like, it would fucking melt your mind. <laughs> it would be, it'd be too much. <laughs> where you're like, this is where we go? Holy fuck, how long to get there? And you're like, a long time. <laughs> like fucking Michael J. Fox playing Johnny B. Good and shit. <laughs> like, was like, oh, was like, guess you weren't ready for that. Yeah, your kids will love it. <laughs> so I he's, like that's Snyder's whole career, honestly. It's like, your kids are going to love it. He sets the stage with the Man of Steel and BVS continues and then also is controversial because he... Uh, you know people are like what uh and like critically boy oh boy the score on that is like a, it's like one of the latter kevin smith movies or something. <laughs> it's like yoga hosers country when you look at that score but you know what does that mean some people are like what do critic scores mean and i'm like you're saying that to me for heaven's sake <laughs> <laughs> mr yoga hosers so um at the end of the day the uh whether or not you know uh, people embrace the movie or not uh, BVS is a stunning achievement. Um, I remember seeing the trailer for that at fucking Comic Con and being like, yeah. "Oh my god, yep. he's literally almost <laughs> making fucking the Dark Knight Returns." And I hope the tail end of all this one day, you know, it's like in reboot culture. You know, whether it takes five, ten years from now, when Zach comes back to Warner Brothers, fingers crossed, to play with those characters again. I think he should just flat out do Dark Knight Returns at this point. I mean, it's damn clear he wants to. Like, I mean, obviously, like, you know, he loves Frank Miller from as far back as 300 and before. That's how you and, can, that's that's the way to return. I mean, to be like, you know what? Here. Zack Snyder's return presents. Now, I mean, you know what I mean? would you feel it redundant because he used so many pieces in BVS? I wouldn't. Not personally. No. Right? And honestly, like, are you fucking nuts? I, like, I watched a movie where at the end. Batman and the Joker teamed up to stop the end of the world. Like, and, fucking, and that's the deal. Yeah, I'm ready to go. <laughs> it's like in a world where he seems very comfortable on streaming now. Like, uh, like Netflix has embraced him. Uh, his his latest zombie flick is so dope. Like, and and he like, yeah, oh, made two at a time. Yeah. Like somehow, like because they already have the seat. Like in the Jersey prequel. too. He went to Atlantic City. Really? Really? I didn't yeah. realize All that. All the stuff in the casino was a. A uh, casino in Atlantic City that was just about to blow up. That movie comes out at the same time that Justice League is a streaming exclusive. You know what I mean? He seems very cool in there, and like, and and he's in a spot where it doesn't have to be an ultimate edition. If you give me six episodes, I'll finally get to tell a story I want. Dark Knight Returns is a perfect spot to do that. He could go issue by issue, panel by panel. Who cares if we've seen Batman in front of the lightning strike in BVS? I'll, I'll watch it again. I'll see it again. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, let's like, let's make Ben even bigger. How yeah. much bigger can we make Ben? Like, you know what I mean? Can we shoot him at like <laughs> seven five and this? You know what I mean? Like, the, you know what's crazy though is the as as Justice League closes, it is Ben at his not biggest in terms of like the the fucking sheer muscle tonnage he put on for bvs yeah but it has been looking his absolute fucking best oh like the marsh like at the, when he when he, when he gets hunter. out of fucking bed and talks yeah. to the martian manhunter yeah. <laughs> he looks fucking stunning yep. stunning nobody's looking at the alien no i fucking i i like i should have been excited that the martian manhunter made his dc movie debut but i was like Look at how good Bruce Wayne looks. In pajama pants. Yeah, oh my God. I was ready to follow that movie. Like once Martian Manor took off, it's like, make breakfast. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Well, well, I'd watch the Snyder Cut of the workout sequence when mm. he's training and uh, to put on the, the metal suit or whatever. In oh, PBS. remember when he fucking- And he's like flipping tires and tire. smacking stuff <laughs> with like, it. and just screaming. And we, you know, showering and shit. Now Where's for, that cut? For those, oh, I'm sure it exists somewhere, but it sounds like it exists in your heart. I mean, it does. Well, at Taylor's like, again, with Ben Shower. <laughs> You're like, it's what makes a marriage work. <laughs> so uh, when, uh, you know, uh, Justice League, we all know the backstory, but briefly, uh, they go make Justice League. And in the midst of it, a uh, lot of things go wrong, including personal tragedy and Zach's life and he steps away from the movie uh, and or the movie's flat out 
taken away from him. Uh, he wanted to put it to the side naturally to deal with family stuff. The studio wanted to make money, <coughs> finish it, put it out. So they brought in uh, Joss Whedon, which I remember at one point was the thing that people were like, all right, yeah, like the guy that made Avengers, like, you know, fucking sure, he'll help. Um, and as we all saw, that really wasn't the case. No. Um, so then uh, something historical happened. Um, uh, you know, there have been directors who have uh, put out their director's cuts and extended cuts of films in the past. And there's always been the director's prerogative, um, the studio's prerogative. I can't think of a time where the audience made something happen. And the audience literally made it happen. Hashtag uh, release the Snyder cut was a movement that uh, was so big it went beyond social media and people talked about it and fucking the real news and whatnot and affected change. There was this uh, uh, campaign to see the real movie. Um, we talked about it way early on before. I think it was before and I ain't taking credit at all. Uh, so please don't fucking put it through that filter but like before it was organized i think we were talking about it on fat man beyond because jamie and the audience yep. cat ears yep. had been in a test screening and so i had talked about being on the set of the star wars movie in england where they had shot both justice leagues and so there were dudes who worked on the crew who were like giving me the inside dope and they were like oh my god J zach's was incredible so much better and they were telling me like what was playing they had these long boards drawn out by jim lee of what was going to oh, be happening wow. and shit which included dark side and i was mm -hmm. like what are you talking about no way then uh, during an episode of fat man beyond at the cantina uh jamie cat ears who sits like right up front she was off to the side that night i remember she had seen an early test screening of justice league pre joss whedon wow which included like it wasn't she said it wasn't finished and there was a lot of like you know storyboards and pre -vis art and stuff but it included fu that fucker's head getting cut off and oh, going through the hole and dark Lord side fuck, standing there. yeah and i was like what the fuck and so we talked about it. and then uh, again i ain't taking credit for it by any stretch of the imagination i'm just saying we talked about it and then this happened but it it felt like later on like other people were Hey man, yeah, I want to see this fucking thing too. And for all I know, they were talking about it before even we talked about it on that episode of Fat Man Beyond. Regardless, um, that release the Snyder Cut movement got fucking huge, and to the point that Warner Brothers literally listened, and fortuitously, Warner Brothers was starting their own streaming channel. Uh, they wanted to go big, and you know they were like, what, "Fucking give the people what they want." Like uh, the whole the whole of the internet is saying they want to see this long ass cut Zack Snyder's cut of the Justice League. Let's do it! And so they announced that they were going to do Zack Snyder's Justice League version of Justice League called Zack Snyder's Justice League, which was the his vision from start to finish, uncut. They didn't know if they were releasing it separately or as one big unit, but but we all at that point knew we had a bunch of money, fifty to seventy million, to finish it and make it a movie um because there was a lot of there there was always like controversy does it exist this does the snyder cut even exist and it, the, the answer was yes and no a version of it existed but like was it one you could put in theaters no it clearly needed to be finished and effects needed to be done and scenes needed to be enhanced with the visual effects and blah, blah. so that money they got to do that on hbo max got them a completed movie got them back to exactly what he would have done and even better than what he would have done back when you know he was directing the movie and before he was replaced um he got to tell the exact story he wanted to tell because he, they would not let him do a fucking four-hour movie back then uh coming off bvs not by any stretch of the imagination so it wound up like with the snyder cut on hbo max they were like all right Fucking go for it. Put everything in. Every piece counts. Go for it. Well, I just mean that he like there there's a lot of things that like he wasn't getting official permission to do. So like they're like, no black suit Superman. And so like he I remember he said something like he shot it or colored it a certain way 
to when if he were to be able to get to go back through it, all they had to do was do one thing to make his suit look black and silver. It's not like he was wearing a different one, you know, mm-hmm. uh, like just like little like it almost feels like safety nets he like left in place in case something were to happen. Smart. Uh, I, what happened first? Does does Sonic does the Sonic the Hedgehog movie get bullied by the internet first, and then Snyder no. Cut? Is that way after? I, in because... my mind, Snyder Cut happens first, and, and uh, Sonic happened after because Sonic happened like a minute ago. Copy. I just didn't know if one influenced the other and got it going because uh, for a while it felt I, like maybe I'm wrong though. But I, this uh, this well, this is uh, there's influence in terms of like the you know look. One could go as far back as snakes on a plane to say the internet influenced sure, movie sure, making. Sure. This is more about the internet like gets a film released, a director's cut, an uncut version of the movie released. That's never happened before. They've released uncut versions of the movie, but I don't think an audience demand has ever done this before peter jackson if he ever want um does he ever done long versions of the rings pictures uh, he has but that's because he like, likes to do that. they swear by him though. Well, like the people that are hardcore rings i like, got a lot of my friends i i have nothing but respect for them i don't super mm. uh but i like they swear by the extended those DVDs. extended versions are incredible like, they they, they really them. are and especially now in a time where we're used to watching a 12 hour movie right um and that's really the difference by like, way of our streaming shows. by the way by way of our streaming shows you now, when we worked at a movie theater, a four hour movie is not logistically possible. Explain. Okay. There's only so many seats that I have. There's only so many shows I can show in a day. Mm-hmm. If I have a four hour movie, we talked about showing the Irishman and we couldn't get the turnaround. We can't make any money off of that unless you sell Tickets. out. You, you would- and it's in maybe Justice League, we would have been able to do it, but I don't think we would have been able to. Um, offer that kind of real estate the same way we had three theaters playing Black Panther when Black Panther was out because it was a four house independent um, very small theater. Well, it's like look when we got Blade Runner 2049 it's right. like the employee you can only show it three times as opposed to four times the employees have to stay till 2 a.m. waiting for it and so you better hope you sell out a lot right. of popcorn on Blade Runner 2049 otherwise we paid a lot for it. This is what you're hearing right now ladies and gentlemen is the movie the real business talk of the real movie business we were on the floor <laughs> in the we trenches really you the really ground. are yeah. you guys are fucking the first line of offense like this is where it all fucking goes it's nice to hear you that. say that it, you, you have no idea. Used to say that Kevin, in a normal You're all, world, we're all in the movie business together <laughs> like two years ago we're sweeping up popcorn and listening to this podcast exactly. like in a messed up theater like you know 100%. I mean? so like this is this is a delight to hear you say that it's very <laughs> but this it's, is as vindicating as the snyder it's cut. true exhibition i remember i'll never forget we were on a panel in uh south by southwest 1997 and it's a panel of very cool filmmakers that i probably the only reason i was on it was because that chasing amy happened that year so you're a fucking, very cool filmmaker kevin you're very, very cool. sweet very you cool. guys so are sweet cool. you, you can are. see why they're gonna play so cool so cool so cool um so who's on the panel robert rodriguez is on the panel oh, yeah. quentin tarantino is on the panel mike judge is on the panel uh i'm on the fucking panel uh, George Wang's on the panel. Good Lord, man. Uh, that was a big fucking panel. Am I listening? Am I leaving was Coppola on that panel? Who, Sophia? Sophia? No, I think she was. At, in terms of that movie, I think that's after us. I way gotcha. after 97. Like a couple years after 97. I think she's in the aughts, right? Well, that's Lost in Translation. I don't know when Virgin Suicides came out. Oh, no. That was like, uh, let me see. That was, like that was like Dogma Year, yeah. 99 or something like that. Um, so in any event, we're on this panel, 97. And somebody asks, like, some question about how do I get to be you, like, fucking you know, would-be filmmaker. And Quentin gave the response of, like, don't don't be us. Don't be a filmmaker. There's too many filmmakers. You know what you want to be? A film distributor. A film exhibitor. It's like, that's what there's not enough of. And that they're getting fewer and farther between. My God, was he prophetic. You know how mm-hmm. many fucking distributors exist now? Yeah. Like, we live in a world where Disney now owns Fox. Yeah. So... The pool's getting smaller There's at the same time, to be fair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to be fair, the pool's also getting bigger in as much as they're making more content than ever. Right. Uh, but it's fewer people making more content. So uh, the, the these cats know a thing or two about the movie business, man. They know something about having to put asses in fucking seats. Uh, they and, and as two avowed 
Justice League fans. You turned Luke turned Jake into a Justice League fan, correct? Uh, yeah, it's a big. I had to like more so than not. I sort of like it was like a friendship test where I'm like, we're not real friends until I make you watch Batman v Superman extended cut like six times until you get it. I'll right. say until you understand. I I wouldn't have any of it. I saw the original cuts and then Luke started working at the theater and at the theater you work eight hour shifts. And you have to kind of like the person you're working with. Right. Because <laughs> there's a lot of downtime. No and in said downtime, he he turned me on Zack Snyder almost 100% and got me to watch all these movies. He got me to watch the Andrew Garfield Spider-Man movies this year for the first time. Like, he gets me to watch all of this stuff. And thank goodness he did. <laughs> so, because... Uh, uh, well, that's a different episode. So. <laughs> but vindication for fans of comic book movies that were maybe divisive. It's, it, that's kind of the, the move lately. Also, I worked, I may have said this in a previous episode, but I worked every Marvel movie from Winter Soldier to Endgame. I worked every Star Wars movie that was all of them. Mm. You know, so I, it, people would always ask like, oh, you must watch all these movies. And I'm like, do you come into your job on your day off? Because I'm too busy working I still haven't seen Black Panther because I worked that too hard. Get out of here. Yeah, I mean, it's a weird No, you switch. do. You get sore with it. Or like you get like, you'll get triggered if you hear a song that was like <laughs> the credit song of a movie you swept right. up to it's four times a day for three weeks. You know what I mean? How did I accidentally know those, this song? <laughs> those MCU post credits, we could probably recite them in order like like a fucking like book of poetry. That's like, it's, it's oh, nuts. Don't get us started on well, like, like would the, you... the P.S of a Marvel movie oh, yeah. when you're working at a movie theater, you know. Why? Why? Because everyone sits in their seats and you can't clean the damn theater while people are w- <laughs> waiting in line in the lobby. So one of our favorite parts as an audience of a Marvel movie is the least favorite part of an usher. It's I difficult. Mean... <laughs> it, it, it is it's challenging. I don't care cuz I'm so diehard Marvel. I'm like watching it with them like, "Yes." Like every Are you college. allowed to clean up while the credits you, are on? You have to do what you can mm-hmm. and work around people, but also not kick people out. It yeah. did get to a point where if we knew that there was only like a mid credits and not an end credits, we'd be like, there's nothing left. Just so you know, you don't have to listen to us, but just so you know, there's nothing left. Wow. And that would get most everybody out you so we like could finally clean. That's the, that's the I movie I learned from I, Jake. I don't know if I'd believe you. I'd be, I'd be like, that might be a dirt. A dick you movie. are <laughs> one, dick you're not movie. that unique in that one. I think people, So there were people like, ah, oh, I'll wait oh, and see. Always, always people who I would wait. Now. Always. <laughs> now you have to. And it's How like... strange, because it's literally saying to you visually, fuck you, I think you're lying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it doesn't, well, it doesn't start there. But it also, like, I, either. we know we're right. Right. So more power to you. It's your... You paid for the ticket. It's your right to sit through all of the end credits. Right, and I will. So. And I never like turning lights on like, you know, the the house lights on before the movie or the credits are done kind of a thing. If people are still sitting there because that's rude. Well, um, it's different if you have 20 theaters, too. We worked in a four theater, like like vi- cheapest theater in Chicago. Like everybody would like, you know, what I mean, like we had to like in a very small lobby. So it fucked us over because we had to move people in and out in a very short period of time if you have 20 theaters i mean like at the big theaters they can they can wait until the movie's completely done then roll their wagon in but just didn't work that way luke's absolutely right we had um it's a narrow pathway it's four theaters that held about 400 people in the lobby held about 50 and so we we would have four theaters 400 100 apiece about gotcha there there was two theaters that had about 100 one of them that had like 30 and one of them that had like a little bit back more, in the olden days it was like one theater and they yeah split it up or whatever so and like to take it back to justice league yes if you did a f- four-hour screening of that movie how long do you have to leave between the next show on a, so like on a weeknight we could only show so on a weeknight during school if we opened at like four we could <laughs> only show that movie seven o'clock once. right we could only show it once maybe twice and if we showed it twice you'd have to keep your like three college age employees there until like two in the morning to yeah. walk home very Chicago. late we did some transformers movies that wouldn't end until like one in the morning and i was like cool transformers eight <laughs> like thank you <laughs> it was like the Wahlberg one at that point i was like oh my gosh we found a transformer there were dinosaurs <laughs> <laughs> look at this dinosaur yeah there's something like that but this is uh how amazing like you guys literally have opinions that nobody will have of of movies ever <laughs> unless you're forced to watch them over and over and over. It's the only filter. You know, it's a very weird filter to like have instilled because I worked there for six years. You work at a job every day for six years. Something happens. Mm. Luke worked there for just almost as long. Three, he says. But I think I feel three. Like it was I don't longer. know. It felt like a lifetime. It, w- when you work all those movies it and it 
it's a groundhog day thing, but also like you learn to love certain things. And then there, you know, we also had a bar. So I imagine if you walked that into helps. a <laughs> convenience store and you saw somebody selling smokes the wrong way, you'd be like, what the fuck? So like when we walk into a theater <laughs> and the line isn't moving and the popcorn's not flowing, we're like, what the fuck? I- I'll tell you, I don't know <laughs> if I judge other clerks based on the fact that I'm like, I made a movie about the world's worst clerks. Like, there's no way I could be like, hey, do it better. Fair enough. Um, but I did have a moment recently in retail, and I'm sorry to Snyderverse fans. They're like, come on! Oh, we're being buddies. This we'll is so important. Back. We'll get back to it. And trust me, Luke's going to fillet this movie so sweetly. You're going you're gonna to be like, I'm glad we didn't have to live through that for more than 20 minutes straight. I went to this place, this vegan bakery. Yeah, I'm a vegan. I ain't rubbing it in your face. You don't need to be vegan. I do, because I had a massive heart attack a couple years ago, almost died. So I changed, went plant-based. That's what brings me to this lovely vegan in Toluca Lake called uh, Toluca Lake Cafe and Bakery. All vegan. Um, They sell, uh, like, uh, I guess they'd be, like, uh, Mexican or Latin bakery treats so porquitos oh. conchas things that i'd never been exposed to before where i was like what's this and they're phenomenal so everybody who's like uh, in line before me uh they all like speak to the lady behind the counter lovely old lady it's a family run shop and uh you know they're going like uh, uh you know uh then porquitos and stuff like they're not, they're white as me but they had four years of Spanish, so they're ordering like in in Spanish, <laughs> even though everything is in English. So you know, I'm like, oh, I guess that's being considerate, whatever, or being pretentious. I don't know. So I watch this lady, and she's fucking like ordering a bunch of shit, and you know, lady behind the counter, this older lady, she has to get everything. She gets the whole like order together, and uh, and she wants um uh tamales and that takes like you got to wrap each one individually and you know my heart's going out to this lady behind the counter the older lady i'm like man like look at her look at her go and so she rings it all up and she charges the lady and you're we're on this side of the counter and it's one of those registers where you just put your cash right your it's like a you know modern thing you stick your credit card in and fucking it's facing you right. which means it's facing me as well and I literally watched this moment happen. <laughs> I get judgy about it. Total page comes up. And would you like to add a tip? And it provides percentages for you to add the tip. And again, I'm going to say for the record, this elderly lady was hopping to and hustling to put this lady who was white as me, but like busting her high school Spanish. Right. <laughs> You know, to help her out and stuff. And I ain't being, granted, I'm waiting, but I'm, I'm a stoner. I don't care. I got nowhere to go. I'm going to eat the fuck out of this country. <laughs> so I got all the time in the world, and I like to watch the human dramas unfold in front of me. I'm a writer, so I'm always looking for material. So this lady puts her credit card in, the tip thing comes up, and I watch her finger hover because I'm like, what is she going to tip? And it hovers right to next. No! So I'm like, all right, fair enough. There's a tip jar on the counter. Maybe she's going to do it in cash. That's nice of you. Yes. Save, yeah, no taxes that way. You <laughs> gotta, know, be, very cool. gotta be she's got cash on her and she doesn't want to put it on a credit card. Be. She's picking up for a corporation <laughs> or some such shit. <laughs> she picks up her fucking gear and she walks out. Now, I'm pretty sure I saw what I saw, but I don't want to go accusing people. So the lady behind the counter goes, can I help you? I said, yes. Did that lady tip? And she goes, what? And I was like, did that lady tip? She goes, yeah. And I was like, are you sure? I don't think she tipped. And she looked at the caster and she goes, no. I was like, I knew it. And I went to the door, opened the door, and yell out in the parking lot, no tip? <laughs> and the lady is putting the stuff in her car and she goes, what? And we're all wearing masks, right? So she comes back to the store and I was like, you didn't tip. And she was like, yeah, I did. I was like, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and this lady hopped too. She's going, no, I tipped. And I was like, uh, you didn't, but whatever. And I tipped for her instead. I was like, I'll tip for you. And she goes, thanks. Oh my God. And fucking after she left, for sure, I said to Layla, like, let's be sure. Like, because then her son came out and stuff. I was like, did she tip? Because, like, I would have been mortified if, like, right. I was the asshole. Right. But no. I don't get it. Now, you know, some people out there are like, 
hey man, not everyone can afford to tip. Number one, even if you give a buck, a buck is a tip. Number two, she got into a fucking Mercedes. She could have tipped. She bought enough fucking shit. Yeah. She could have tipped. <laughs> uh, but to lie about it, like, I don't know. Pretty greasy. If you're gonna, if you leave trash on the floor of a theater now, me and Jake are gonna come and be like, "What the fuck?" You know, uh, you know how we're here to talk about Zack Snyder's Justice League. Well, you just heard Kev Smith's Justice League. <laughs> you, you, you Justice it was, was not the great. dawn of justice, man. I was like, no tip. <laughs> That's like Batman taking out the tower. You know what I'm Your saying? Your voice was modulated when you said it, right? <laughs> it was. It was like... And I chose Batman so as to not be one of the God characters. There you go. I'm the mortal amongst gods. I like Standing that. shoulder to shoulder. <laughs> Let's get back to Zack Snyder's justice. It writes itself. It really does. <laughs> <laughs> and easily shootable, buddy. I'm in one location? Yeah, man. We're out. We don't need five, four hours. <laughs> 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 we were out. I, that exchange was done. That's yeah, a short me, film. Yeah, That's a short film I could put behind a 99% pay wall on yeah, amazon there you right. go to bring or win awesome. awards in japan <laughs> no, exactly yeah, excellent writing, point I'm final draft right. nobody can see it but like, i'm typing he is working right saying. in front of us um how excited were you where were you on the spectrum of release the snyder cut are you a social media kid either of you is were you guys involved with that uh, or you're like that's not for me that's for other people I had so much respect for the movement. AKA, um, no. We'll, like, just, we'll th- cut th- it short. You don't have to do all the. <laughs> no, like, I, I love it and stuff, but I didn't like. You, know, you like, were not one of them camping. I, I probably signed a petition or two. I do that every now and then for stuff I believe in. The Globetrotters wanted to join the NBA as a, a regular franchise, and I signed the fucking <laughs> petition. Like, I like things. Well done. You know what I mean? So, like, I probably signed a petition here or there, but I, I didn't. You know, like, as much as I believed in Zack Snyder, as much as I believed in Man of Steel and Batman v Superman, I didn't believe that such a thing could happen where... You're not alone. A studio would, would st- I don't know, stand down. And, and they didn't. They're smart. Like, WB is genius. They made almost a billion dollars on the first cut in theater. They gave a little loot to make this one. And then they made a bunch of dough probably on HBO Max and subscribers and stuff. If nothing Picked else, they made good well. Sure, yeah. you know what I mean, they ate their cake, had it, ate it again. Like, so, like, they're doing fine, too. But I just didn't believe it would go down. So I, I felt like just blown away, vindicated, like couldn't couldn't believe it. I, I don't know. I'm sure you can go back and listen to old episodes of Fat Man Beyond. Um, but I, too, like I was all for it. My thing was always like, let him do his fucking movies. Like now that we've seen one of his movies interrupted, please let him do his fucking thing. Because at least his thing is his flavor. Yep. Whereas you just gave us this fucking milkshake that's his flavor and some other shit and fucking it just ain't tasty at all. I'd rather just watch what he had in mind. And to say that Zack Snyder's Justice League is a different movie from Justice League is to say that, like, you know, uh, my dick is different than my wife's dick. <laughs> Like they're almost incomparable, right? It's like it's not Coke and Pepsi, dude. It's like it really is Coke and like milk. And you would think they are based on the fact, like, well, come on, fucking, so much of it is the other movie. How how different can they be? It's not even Coke and milk. It's like a two liter of Coke and a Hershey's Kiss. Agreed. You know what I mean? Like it's like (laughs) bizarre. We watched the the Justice League, the original cut. How, How down was I? In a family show at the theater, we were waiting. You know, uh, part of the reason when why it we... came out in theaters, you yeah, guys we did like a midnight That's a perk screening. of the theaters, like when, like the Wednesday night before things came out, we could test the movie or whatever, and we watch it late at night. Which Luke was just watching the movie, but uh, I was watching it too. But it's also like you know, if we sell out a theater with our friends for Endgame, you know that shit's going to be crazy, right? You know, um, a, a lot of the movies we were just watching because, like, we had a bug up our ass and thought it would be fun to watch. Um, but things like the Marvel movies we really like to watch just to see, like, how serious is this really going to be? And um, you could usually judge pretty good. And Justice League was rough. That was a rough watch. Even for you? Were you a fan going in? Were you like, I can't wait? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Because, like, I had spent I had spent all this time banging the drum on uh, on BVS. Wonder Woman had just showed out. People loved it. it like, you know what I mean? And it felt like it was such a such a turn, and and it felt like everything was. And you were um, to take it back. You were a big BVS kid. Oh, oh my God! So BVS, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you just uh, came a little. Oh my! I, God. I, I mean, dude, I, I started a whole podcast because of how much I love BVS. Like me and my friend Katie Grodsinger, we went to film school together as well, and we have a podcast that's like a hun- almost a hundred episodes called Bad Movie Brunch, all because I wanted to do one episode saying here's why Batman v Superman's good, and right. that was like in twenty. 17 or like right. 2018 like i couldn't stop banging the drum and now it's 
I don't have to bang it. It's been it, the the and to quote Lex and BVS, the bell's been rung. Like you know what I mean, and Look they've heard that. it. Look at you that. know what I mean. Like uh, well so done. I, I don't Good have cuts. to do. Deep I don't have to do reference. shit. Uh, Snyder, like you know, justice was had. But at the time, yeah, I was so justice. into BVS, and. I think mostly because, like, when they saw it in theater, I was, I was like, well, that was challenging. I was even like, even for you, Justice League was challenging. Justice League was like, I walked home like Charlie Brown, like, from, like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> like because, because, like, I, I thought, I thought it was like, okay, well, at the very least, it looks like it's sequelizing BVS. At the very least, it looks like we're on the right trajectory. Wonder Woman was great, and then you watch it, and it, it just like, you know, you've got the CGI mustache opening stuff, which feels very. The, the scene is very Joss. It, it's not the Superman we'd got. It was right. like, it, I like Superman saving cats from a tree. One of my and, biggest complaints about it is those kids don't sound like kids. I mean, yeah. I, they sound like two 20 year olds sound, I, trying to sound like kids. I've like, never Thupa thought Superman? about it. <laughs> <laughs> Would you find a hippo, Thupa <laughs> Man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, flip that camera. Like a paddle. I think you're going to you're, well, you're see a couple college kids. Full uh, disclosure, I haven't seen that cut of the movie since the, the midnight screening that I, we saw. I today. watched it a lot and, and, and bought the target exclusive and watched it more at home did you like, really i i liked i'm a collector That's you know what i mean i can't let it fall by the wayside zach still needed my money like i um <laughs> i in terms of the justice league version of it um i did you think their opening credit sequence was the original opening credit sequence of the justice league or did uh, did zach intend to do the opening that he did in Zack Snyder's Justice like, League. Literally pick it up from BVS. Was like, that the full intention? Or do you think... I always wonder if he saw how the Justice League opened and he was like, well, I ain't going to do that. I could, But he says he didn't see it at yeah, all. Yeah, that's how the that's, lore goes. That's I how could, the lore goes. I and could, I believe him, too. He's a fourth fart fucking dude. Like, for sure. I honestly don't feel he says one thing and, and The lore says that his wife and Christopher Nolan said, don't fucking watch this movie. Which, if you're familiar with the flick, like, I, if now having seen his version of right. it, um, I, that's probably the best and only advice you could give because yeah. he, too would have been baffled like how do you get this out of that it's like sometimes like you know I'll, every once in a while i'll bump into online some takedown of one of my movies and i'm like how do you get that <laughs> out of what we made like right. really like did i is it me no it's the children who are wrong exactly <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it is like it is baffling and i imagine he would have felt the same way but there is one moment in, and i you know i don't <laughs> i don't want this to be like smith defends justice league but i did like um save one person oh yeah yeah that and i didn't know that that was him i didn't necessarily feel that that was joss like that didn't scream like oh, there's fucking joss whedon dialogue but i did like save one person that felt like that felt Batman to me for him to be like, look, you know, if I'm dealing with a kid who's never done it before. Um, I can't remember if there's anything else that he did that I'm like, well, I can live with that. Like, I remember when that movie ended, I was just like, oh, man. I mean, and then they do the the race, like Superman and Flash do the mid credit race, which, which know, is like I, was like, I was like, well, that's comics. I'm into that. Exactly. I liked it a lot well, more when when Grant and Melissa did it on Supergirl, like years before. Agreed, you know, and like, they were much more charming, uh -huh. eating their ice cream. Who did they mom? Yeah, uh, that's yeah. The best end credit. Well, I was so happy. Watch that a lot. I was happy that end credit came back, but with a better version too, like the yeah. one of Lex and stuff. But yeah, I mean, like it, it felt like that was that movie feels like this move where it's like we'll try to please both crowds. And instead you have the people like my camp who lived and died by, not only did I love Man of Steel and BVS, not only did I love Wonder Woman, I went and saw Sni Suicide Squad three times. I dug that shit. Right. So like I was in. So you're I was, deep on the Snyderverse. I was in. I was like, why not? And, and and don't get me wrong. It's not like I was like not into the MCU. Like I'm, I believe the MCU. It's right. just, I was happy to have another take uh, and, and, and more options and stuff. Um, But like, so you don't please those fans. And then, they also try to like appease the casual moviegoer, but the casual moviegoer can smell insincerity just as much as anybody else, just as much as filmmakers too. Like 
I can tell that I, I can tell where the reshoots are happening just by the look of people, by the by the like you know what I mean I can right. tell when do you do you, as as ushers, do you engage with the audience and hear like when you say the average guy, the average audience, is that based on conjecture? Is that based on I've seen I've worked with average audiences and they too. So I'm I honestly I'm making it up. Uh, <laughs> but uh but I just I, I gave you the perfect platform know, to be I like know. I sat there with them. Fuck and, yeah, oh, man. you should have lied. I, I sat there with like a trench coat on and like studied what people were saying about No, I I, I didn't I, I just like you just I, that's your feeling. Well, You're we like, chop well, it up with the a lot of Joe. And when we chop it up with a lot of people that come out of movies and like you get a even if you haven't seen a flick, I know a lot about movies I didn't see just based on like a conglomerate of 200 people's opinion coming out and stuff too. But it's like, you know, when something's off and right. you know, like when, when you're trying to put the the square peg in the round hole and stuff right. and, and every now and then in that, like in that justice league, it just rears its head. Honestly, what, pretty frequently. What came out when that came out? Do you guys remember as dudes who were working in the industry? At so that Aquaman came out right after, right? Uh, Am I crazy? Is that the who, same year? Right. Like it was November justice league. And Aquaman then is like right. Aquaman after. was Christmas. It was either. Right? I, I want to say. I think that it might have the been case. the following Christmas. Am I? Is, is I, I know the they case? get blurry because November was a Justice League here, and then I think Aquaman was the following. Christmas. Was anything like, out was there around Doctor Justice Strange? League? Yeah, that's what Doctor I'm Strange was r- November twenty. It was right around then, I believe. And then Ragnarok, but I think that was before. Ragnarok was a couple weeks before. Oh my God! Justice that's League. what preceded Justice yeah. League. So there, here's the other thing to remember: like going back to what we were talking about about like length and stuff. Like, there's also like the <coughs> just the business of like we need a two hour movie. Well, these these MCU movies are two and a half hours long, and they're sitting through the credits. Mm. So like we need to we need to get this going. And I really do feel like there is, like you said, like it is just kind of this ungodly conglomeration where you're just making everybody unhappy. Yeah. Um, I feel like he's so comfy on streaming now. Oh, when you say we need a two-hour movie, that's the studio. The studio. I thought saying, that was you. No, no, it's the studio saying to the theaters, we need we need a two-hour theater so we can get more shows in, so right. we can get some turnaround going. Um, as far as I'm concerned, because I was always just concerned about turnaround all the time. And yeah, you get an idea of like, especially at our theater, because we had to get rid of movies pretty quick. Into the Spider Verse stayed for seven weeks. Wow, you know what I mean? Like that's really, really good. Wonder Woman came back. Wonder and played Woman four more weeks. Exactly and on one and, screen or all the screens. Oh, uh, like, like like one of the you screens. start just like on two and then you go down to one. But, but an average film goes three weeks. A not a very good film is two weeks. And then if you get real, if you have a Black Panther, you get it sometimes for a couple of months, and that's like crazy. So, uh, well, I don't know like exact thoughts as much as. Spider-Verse stayed for seven weeks. Justice League was probably there for three. Uh, it, it moved quick. The reason I think it had to be a year later is three because... Three is even surprising. I, I think mean, like they, 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 they needed a second to breathe and rebrand because they were like, it's not going to be like that. And like they gave them all the, the new suit and it was a different movie and they did everything kind of different. Batman vs. Superman did not do um, well at our theater, particularly. Is that right? In comparison to what they want from the Marvel movies, DC was just not hitting it the same way with the frequency the same right, way right. that's all so by the time you see Zack snyder's justice league on uh, hbo max mm-hmm. which uh full disclosure like i did a um special for for hbo home video hosted interviewed zach you're wearing the t-shirt Zack snyder's justice league um <laughs> the uh so you know and and i again i think he's a lovely guy but i don't say that i enjoy this movie or i think he's talented because i know him i don't know him well enough to be that guy but you know facts facts i don't you don't need me to fucking tell you the guy's talented and if you've paid attention for the last few years because he's fairly you know vocal now um you don't need me to tell you he's a fucking nice guy either but um you know once again in interviewing him for that special the premiere special because it was right before it aired the night that it aired yeah. on hbo max uh he's such a fucking sweetheart such a nice fucking dude and i don't understand like with all the money that they got over there and with all the stuff that they green light and do it's like break off a bunch and make let him do his own fucking thing like 
let the Snyderverse continue. Why not? Like, especially there in that venue, which is an incredibly safe uh, space. Like, you don't have to compete at the box office, as they've learned over the course of the last year. They've learned a lot, you know, I'm sure, with uh, releasing movies day and date on HBO Max uh, with theaters and stuff. And we saw how that affected the Matrix, the recent Matrix. So, you know, there's there's a there's got to be a way to just be like, here's a hundred, two hundred million a year, man. Do a thing for us, like do uh, here your yearly fucking thing with us. It, why not? There's enough of an audience out there. They're always like you can't avoid it on social media. Like they they live and breathe. They're they're not they're not, not they didn't get the Snyder cut and they were like we're finished. No, you know now they're like bring us the the David Ayer cut okay. of Suicide Squad and release the Snyder verse. Like keep it going. And I I'm with the kids. Like why can't they just be like you know maybe it could be you know. Maybe Zach's had enough of like Warner Brothers. You know, you get kicked a few times and you're like, look, I can go to Netflix. They'll give me fucking better money. I can do whatever the fuck I want. Carte blanche. Carte I mean, blanche. And like, you know, all I have to do is that thing. All I have to do is let go of their toys. Right. Which, I, you know, admittedly, he put a lot of time into their toys. But there's happiness and also letting it go, apparently, because he went over to Netflix and seemed to have a blast. But. If I'm HBO, if I'm HBO Max, if I'm Warner Brothers, man, like I'd be like, let's find a way to make this work, man. They ain't got to be theatrical, maybe. Maybe it's just like once a year. Like, come on, some of these fucking straight to HBO Max movies look expensive and cost money. Like, fucking, I watched Ridley Scott made Raised by Wolves. That shit looked expensive, son. (laughs) Give that kind of money to Zach to do a thing. A five five hour thing in the DC universe, With the Snyderverse. I have a question for you, gentlemen. Fire. With the advent of the two Spider Man movies and their multiverses, Doctor Strange now coming out, the mm. Flash now coming out. Mm. Do you God, think you're getting me so turgid just saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds you know the one thing I've been saying about this new Spider Man movie is that it's the most brilliant piece of housekeeping I've ever seen in a movie ever Explain. in my life. Um, every loose end from every Spider Man movie was not only tied up, but then turned on its head so that we all feel better about ourselves in addition to the films that have already been If it's shown. the climate we're in now as opposed to the climate came out when it's, it's like, just of course you kill the villain in the end. Clean yeah. as fuck. And it was really, really nice to watch. It's just a great movie across the board. For somebody who is kind of whatever about uh, superhero movies in general, like that was, it was, I really, 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 really liked it. Um, uh, but I do want to know with all of this stuff happening, do you think that if the money is there, like if it all makes sense and now multiverses are a thing, why not let Zack Snyder do his thing? Maybe that was just because we have one Batman at a time. And now that we can have they as many Batman clearly, at a time. They, over now. Yeah. They yeah. clearly don't feel that way anymore. Like have, I, th- I think there are enough. There was a time <clears throat> when hey we're make, we're Warner Brothers and we make motion pictures and you know fucking Batman on TV what are you fucking nuts uh-huh. that's for cartoons and shit you know now they're like fuck yeah we'll do Batman on TV like we're doing the we're doing a Penguin show right It'd be fucking silly if you don't think a Batman appearance is not somewhere in the cards for it they're doing a Gotham Central show I think. Yeah. How does he not show up fucking there? They're certainly building out the, the universe, the Gotham universe and stuff. So that's with their current incarnate. That's just off of the Batman. Right. Clearly, they're willing to spend money on this sort of thing. Um, nope. It sounds like there's no plans, although he tweeted something or he didn't tweet or whatever he his social media thing is. Somebody said, should we give up hope? And he like fucking wrote never give up hope or something like that. Um, and at one point tweeted a picture which could indicate like, you know, a a um, another DC project. So I don't know. For all we know, maybe that discussion is happening. I'm just saying like if I was in charge, oh, my God, I'd well, be like it's dumb money to just give this this guy, not dumb money is dumb not to give this guy smart money, not d- to give this guy 
a chunk of change and keep this fucking thing going. They're letting, like James Gunn is keeping squad That's going right. right now with uh, Peacemaker. Yeah. Right. And uh, that show, A, looks wonderful, but B, does not necessarily look cheap. Granted, Zach's stuff takes a lot more time than right. it looks like. I ain't dismissing James Gunn shit. It's beautiful. The squad's a beautiful movie. But, Starfish. Yeah, for fucking pretty Starro big. is gigantic. But, I heard he wrote every episode, too. Yeah, of this. Yeah, it's yeah, pretty man. cool. But it looks like, and this ain't me being dismissive. I can't wait to watch it. But like, there's a budget there. Yeah, sure. I don't know if Zach could work in that budget based on what he likes to do. His shit is, again, he paints in fucking, in splash pages. Man makes blockbuster well, and, and James, like, James works dialogue, yeah. you know, and, and it's not like he's not great at visuals. He's great at that, too. But, you know, he'll make a fucking uncut two-minute fucking take of peacemaker bickering with vigilante yeah. <laughs> work and be funny um zach you know zach stuff there's uh, some levity or humor there but funny is not what you think of well, and it's like he's and it's also time consuming like it takes time to make all them slow-mo shots like if you're doing an hour-long series you know that's 20 minutes of slow-mo shots right there alone they're beautiful but they, they take some time but it's not like it can't be done it's like right. just let them shoot another fucking five-hour movie chop it up like bait and fucking watch the fishies come eat it man like you track them fucking sharks the one i mean the analogy falls apart but you know what i'm talking about like <laughs> I'll fucking, eat it. I'll eat it's back. all about the subscriber <laughs> game these guys are chasing 100 million right now they're at 70 something you know, I guess they could know more than us. I'm sure there are people out there going, well, fucking, if it would have made sense, they would have fucking made the offer by now. They got the algorithm they know. Yeah. I don't know. Like, I, I, it feels like that movement's only gotten bigger. And HBO Max is just big, man. Like, Batgirl is, is going to be, be fucking it. huge. That's and a series like, or a movie? It's the flick, right? And they've confirmed that. Is Keaton, it for them? It ain't even for. I think it's for them. Yeah. And if Keaton's I remember correctly. It's confirmed to be in it yeah. after being in the Flash. It will not stuff. be exhibited. Uh, uh, you know what I mean? I think so. That's. Awesome. I, I and unless I'm misunderstanding. Oh, and that was then, a question. Yeah, the sorry. You no, said it with authority. I was like, listen, this motherfucker, he knows. Yeah. The word exhibited I, was so hard I, ass. I was like, oh that. It needs to be more. You, it was a little British. It will not be exhibited. It will not be exhibited. Yeah, it was more yeah, statement than question. You're asking. I that was a question. So. I, 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 the way I understand it, it's an HBO Max only venture. So it They're does going not hard. think it'll be exhibited. That plus, like like you said, like a few days from now, we're not going to stop. Awesome. I'm gonna, we should really adapt that more. Adopt that more than than fucking like is it in theaters like is it going to be exhibited is it not being exhibited yes. it does make it sound like you're like like we're Will like clerks three be exhibited it's just gonna be a piece, doesn't it if there's people still alive after this i used to tell people <laughs> i was in exhibition and distribution i like to Smart. say that kind of thing. fucking true it's and, part of the business and you talk about omicron and stuff too but like could this age and it's it's a terrible it's a terrible circumstance to have like hbo max thrive on it but it's true it's like it like Zack Snyder's Justice League is going to be part of the the 2020 COVID time capsule. Yeah, and like all of this. Also, streaming one stuff, of the most important comic book movies, honestly, ever made. And with, I don't even say that with like down. it's an, a hint of irony. It's when you think of comic book movies, it's a not it's epic. It's an opera. It's got a Dameron, um, and it's also insanely memorable because of how it came to be, how it almost didn't happen, and then existed first there was a mountain then there was no mountain then there is to borrow from donovan uh let us <laughs> let us dive into finally your take as a fan when you watched uh zach snyder's justice league uh i mean i think i've said the word vindication so many times during this episode but it's that like more than anything like the fact that i was seeing it was one thing and like it only had to deliver in that it existed, right? Like I was just so happy that we were here and in this point, but instead it's like, not only did this, it's like you're talking about, not only did this movie exist, like not only was the story there and just like thrown to the side, but like, like a lot of story yeah. and like found a way to make a cyborg origin film within a flick, found a way to do the Aquaman origin movie before the Aquaman origin, but we didn't, you know, we didn't know that till after the fact, uh, found a way to, um, found a way to do a full on flash origin movie. You know what I mean? Like it, it, and it, all the while giving us a full on Steppenwolf origin. Like, it, like when you say all these things out loud, the fact that it is only four hours is mind blowing. And I think part of that is because 
you know, originally he wanted to do two flicks, right? I, I think there was like this huge, like, I've seen this huge, like, artistic piece of what the Snyderverse was supposed to look like or whatever. And it it looks, <coughs> it literally looks like something Lex, like, would draw up after being, like, imbued by Kryptonian knowledge. Like, it's right. like he had something going. He was trying to play chess instead of checkers. And, and that's all good. Um, but, like, you watch this movie and I was, like, overwhelmed by, like, not only how much I enjoyed all of those like new characters, not only by how much I enjoyed the stuff they put in and fleshed out, but just the fact that like you're talking about it, it it's, if it's a triumph. It's a, it's a feeling of like somebody got to succeed. Somebody got a moment. Somebody got to like put it all out there and not only be like, not only get the opportunity, but be applauded for it. And the fact that this stands symbolically in the face of like Zach coming back and finishing this movie after the personal tragedy he suffered, mm. he doesn't le- like he doesn't leave that movie for like in- any movie way. ends with it, what, dedication. Right it, there. That's what I'm saying. And then plays Auto. plays her song over the credits. You know, it's beautiful. That was her favorite song. Uh, he mentioned and stuff. Uh, he said it like when he was talking to you on the on the precursor to it dropping and stuff. Like what what the movie symbolizes and how when he went back through it, he like cut it with uh, suicide prevention like awareness yeah. in mind and stuff. And you see the ad in the flick for it and like. It just feels so cathartic. There's that. There's that layer that it's, it has. It's a movie of catharsis, and yeah. and and I think it, it it speaks loudest when it's through characters like getting over like a lot, a lot, a lot of baggage and pain, and they all are. Barry's got a dad in prison. Cyborg's mom was killed. He should have died. His dad did. That's very complicated. Aquaman's on the outs with his family. Batman's Batman. He's pretty damn moody. Like everybody's <laughs> everybody's going through all this like personal tragedy, and it just plays insanely thematic with what was going on in the United States, what's, what went on with Zach. And so basically you just had to lay this one up. And I said this about Spider-Man too, but they just fucking dunked it. It just felt like the universe can heal now. Yeah. <laughs> Snyder got to tell his story. And I feel like if in if, both color and black, and white. I know I was watching justice is gray today. I'm a, uh, did you ever watch Logan in black and white? No recommend it. Like yeah. highly recommend it. And justice is gray. I mean, this is a movie that is meant to just throw on and be watching chapters. If you feel like it, mm. I recommend that too. It looks really nice in monochrome, dude. And justice is quick. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. I do think it's interesting um, that not only is it in black and white, but then the whole movie is in four, three as well. Yeah. Um, which I've he did I have, that with the other one too. The uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League, the color version, mm-hmm. is also yeah. Both also of them are in four three. three. I was yeah. wondering if that was a way to save money. No, but, uh, I think for him he shot four three because um, he shot for IMAX. Oh, okay, okay. Which he did. Uh, he said his rationale was, you know, you can't get him head to toe in a two three three frame without right. pulling way the fuck back and then they shrink and don't look nearly as dramatic he's right. like look i can line them all up drop the crane down and get this really heroic shot if it's the one three three frame so it was in bvs if you remember the opening was um imax the whole opening sequence and then when the movie proper began it went to like Two three three. Gotcha. He did a Nolan kind of thing. Remember right. Nolan yep. opened with fucking IMAX on yep. Dark Knight. Um. So uh, yeah, it, it he by by doing he framed for this. Okay, whole fucking things composed for for one three three for IMAX, and getting it to two three three is a pain in the ass. Like something, an extra fucking step. Right. So. It's actually easier to be like, great, let's figure out how we're going to fucking map this. That's or, been a question since it stu- since they released it. That's my my guess. I just assumed, uh, I mean, that makes the most sense. I just assumed like, oh, we're putting $70 million into a four-hour R-rated Batman movie. Let's not animate the edges. That's adorable. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> to like, we can't afford, we put this much money in. We cannot afford the black bars. <laughs> Well, I remember just being like, man, if I, I if I shot a football game, I'd probably just put people in the stands. And then like they showed the way they shot the football sequence with cyborg and stuff, and it's like all green, like yeah. no, like not it's even like real nuts. turf. Like, like I, I'm like, it's okay, it's so stylized, like everything to say the least. Most of his stuff, uh, awesome. all of his stuff is incredibly stylized. Even 
even uh, conversation shots, just dialogue scenes, yeah. like where nothing, you know, fucking splash pages happen happening it's still very stylized but that fucking football game is stunning yeah. it was well, something like i don't even like sports and well, i was like that's fucking beautiful i do like sports and he's down to the detail because i'm sitting <laughs> yeah, there watching you're a football it, kid big time football kid so you like that sequence a lot. i love that sequence and i'm watching it with my wife and i'm like why is it gotham versus a real team i'm like why is it wisconsin i'm like is it because they're both under armor schools i know under armor's got a thing with wb <laughs> and then i'm like googling i'm like oh zach's from wisconsin so uh... it's like everything he does dude is like I, there's, there's a choice there's, it's, it's not choices. random this isn't that's... just happening you know what i mean and i think that's maybe the reason i respond to it so much like it, like even like if yes these are iconic characters that a lot of people could consider not to be trifled with or whatever but if zach's like if zach does it he goes all in and i i respect a man who makes a choice no wishy-washiness about it like this is my flavor that's so nice um, and every filmmaker, um, you know, uh, uh, throws in Easter eggs like that, like uh, when they've got an opportunity, if they give a shit, that's how you could tell they care. Uh, Watts does it with uh, Spider-Man. They throw it in license plates, right? Like oh. he's always hiding the a character's first appearance number in a license oh plate. I think recently it was Stan Lee's birthday. He hid that's excellent. in a license plate on the on the on the big freeway scene spoilers i don't want to get yelled at by the internet but come on yeah, it has been, I, 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 been they made a billion and a half <laughs> <laughs> somebody you guys have seen it um you were he talked you into watching it jake Luke yeah i mean i've been it. wanting to watch it but he has a beautiful tv i wasn't gonna watch it on my phone you went to I his place for it. fucking four hours and sat there i was, was house sitting his cats, cats. <laughs> <laughs> over the holiday he was he was he was changed like yeah i'll smoke man. some weed and watch justice league <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> it, it, and you're not be, busy and to be fair it took me two days to watch it i crashed after two hours turned it back on because i thought i missed the whole nightmare sequence i was texting luke with 10 minutes left of the movie being like did i sleep through this thing and he's like just watch the fucking movie i know i started um, like shooting lines at you i'm like you said you watched it he's <laughs> like, like no so close to the end um i you know i i have to say the same as luke there's nothing i appreciate more than a choice and let me tell you something if you have an r-rated 4-3 batman movie that's four hours long choice do they write that r I don't know, but it's. I think there are two. The Fox. ultimate cut BVS is R, and then I think the Snyder cut might all. It would have so. been well. Murder they didn't have, the they don't have to rate it, right? Because it was. A, You're never right. Went. There You're... was no. It was not exhibited. Ah, that, yeah, it was not exhibited. <laughs> Did not have to go through the MP. Was it exhibited? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so maybe I don't know if they rated it, but I guess. Well, you, they still decapitate. There's a couple it's fucks. Like, it's there's some hardcore. Well, they decapitate a monster. You can get away with that. I mean, it's a it's a. I guess that's another hey, conversation to man. have as well because uh, he's a know, new god for heaven's sakes. <laughs> we were watching. Um, we watched kids leave Infinity War, and that was uh, that was hard. What do you mean? Like uh, this might I might be diverting too much, but um, you know, like you, everyone goes sees. Everyone goes to see these superhero movies and it's a big family kind of thing to do. And so we worked Infinity War and at the end of Infinity War, spoiler alert, half of them die. And so there were children coming out being like, what happened to Spider-Man? And it kind of gets it gets to me. That's all. Um, they were they were like looking for answers from you. And you're like, I or just like straight up leaving early in tears I because it's know. not. Because it's it's it. Some people think it's supposed to be a kids movie, and it's actually very very serious. Oh, you know, yeah, sure, yeah. And so that's how I feel about this Justice League. I mean, this is an adult film. You t you take your yes. In many ways, this is the movie we dreamed about when I was a kid. Yeah. Before we've got Tim Burton's Batman, and even after we got Tim Burton's Batman, which was a uh, also like a fucking revolutionary film and a triumph of, of in many ways of, of style. And bringing a tone, you got to remember, a previous Batman was, you know, Adam West and right. fucking about Burt Ward and Campy and stuff. And suddenly it's like, oh, my God, this is kind of like the comics and shit. And he's a little more killy, but whatever the fuck. <laughs> so <laughs> there was, um, I forget why I even brought that up. What was the point? Just different. Um, people go to see these movies for different reasons. Oh, yeah. And Grown up. Yeah. We thought that shit was growing up in 89 and it still played to kids, right? It was a huge kids movie sure. as well. But Jesus, this, this is the movie we dreamed about when I was younger. Like, oh, what if they made a fucking version 
where he just like fucking beat the shit out of people. Like that fucking <laughs> sequence where he like takes all those fuckers out in BVS oh, yeah. is one of the oh, greatest yeah. Batman sequences ever committed to fucking film. Um, it looks like you feel Frank Miller's Batman mm-hmm. is like, oh, it was insane, insanely well done. So I, I like that. I'll take it. There's lots of room for lots of different flavors. They can do another version of Batman that's a little more kid friendly and shit, but this is what we dreamed about when we were younger. Like, could you imagine if somebody treated it so fucking seriously? There was no looking down the nose at it. There was no like joke about like, yeah, what do you want us to wear? Brown spandex or yellow right, spandex? Right, right, like right. holy rusted metal, Batman. Yeah. yeah it's <laughs> not, I mean, I'm all for a ride comments and whatnot, but just like treat it with like fucking such insane respect and that's what he does yeah. they're so fucking serious and he treats them with so much respect um here's my question to you and it's a little like fucking buzzfeedy um, <laughs> i like it i like buzzfeed where would you you know it's it's uh, along the lines of uh uh drowning or eaten by a shark so you know which way you got to pick a way to die you gonna drown or you get eaten by the shark how fast you get eaten by the shark? I can't give you those answers. Oh. Is that the que- that's the actual question? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were like want anything more than that? I thought, I thought, I thought, I thought, like, here's the example. That's so funny. Drowning yeah. or get eaten by a sh- uh, uh, definitely get eaten. I would, really? I would hate to drown. They, they no. say that you know who knows, but they say that drowning is one of the most peaceful ways to die. Is that right? Yeah. I don't know, dude. One time when I was Fucking a kid, getting eaten by a shark, motherfucker. That number one hurts. Number two, like, like really hurts. Number three. The final moments of your life are in fucking agony in the mouth of a super predator. You came so prepared to this answer. You were like, oh, you're a, you are <laughs> thought about this my whole Fuck life. Up. No, dude, I'm Here's so- the ultimate indignity. <laughs> you are one and only life. You, Lucas Guy Taylor, That's filmmaker me. on fucking Amazon, <laughs> loses his life to just be something else's eventual shit. He eats you and it's not like, he's not like he kills you and he wears your skull forever where he's like, I killed a man from above and I was a champion and fucking this will show the land lubbers. You were one of a hundred fucking things he's going to eat that month. And then he just fucking crapped you out in the sea. You, a little miracle of a human being. <laughs> Taylor, Taylor's love yeah. becoming fish poop. Choose drowning. Always choose drowning. All right. I'm, I'm I guys, I, I think I'd rather drown. I gotta, I, I, gotta, I gotta be honest with you. I, I've thought about it. Not for nothing, but if you drown and die and your body's down there, why are you not still fishing? They're catching you fast. They're you getting will. you. You can drown in a lake. There ain't no sharks there. <laughs> I gotta be prepared for that as well. It doesn't sound peaceful to me. I mean, and nobody can tell me for sh- for certain. I suppose, but it doesn't I, seem. It's true. It doesn't seem peaceful. I, it sounds fucking terrifying. I'm Whereas, like. Come people, on, fucking. What people, sounds more terrifying? I can't get Aaron to me. I this is crazy. Or. This thing is eating me alive. Ow, 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 ow. Holy shit. I'm just ahead now, but I'm still alive. <laughs> have you ever had a panic attack? It's like the same thing. I, I have them like three times a day. At this point, I want to get eaten by a fucking shark, Kevin. It's like, all right, you know what I mean? Like, no, uh, but I think that like, it, look, dude, how many people drown a year? I'd love to see the number. Jake, Google it. Don't. <laughs> and it's like, but how many people get eaten by a shark? And it's like, so at least then I'm like a pretty cool statistic. The more important uh, thing is that's just to set you up, just to give you a frame for the real question. I, okay, good. You have to either live in uh, Zack Snyder's metropolis, like close to the Daily Planet, <laughs> or the Marvel Universe at the end of Infinity War. Now, I'm not going to say that you're dying in Zack Snyder's metropolis, but <laughs> shit didn't work out for a lot of those people. It looked like you could have been out of town. You might have been in fucking Chicago visiting some people and stuff. So maybe you escaped it, but you definitely lost your shit. Whereas the Marvel Universe, you're pulled out for five fucking years and you have to come back into a world. You know how difficult so it was get to get blipped. your first films made? Yeah, you get blipped. Okay. Uh, you get snapped. Fuck that blip shit. That's what they call it. It is not what the it blip was. took, isn't it? Well, it makes sense for them. They didn't know it was a snap, but we all saw it, so we know it was a snap. Gotcha. It makes sense. I kind of dig it. 
So <laughs> Wait, which is it? You're, you're faking me out, man. You're, you're shaking me left and right. <laughs> you're getting snapped out of existence for five years, and think about how hard it was to get your movies on Amazon Prime back then. Pain the ass. <laughs> five years from now, <laughs> you've lost a step or two. Fuck. Um, fucking people have gone on with their lives, left you behind. Taylor, Taylor became Taylor something else. The scene oh, got a little gosh. less, sa- <laughs> less <laughs> saturated. <laughs> oh yeah, all of it's but you missed fucking Zack Snyder's Justice League. Oh, However, okay. the good news is when you come back, you do have that to look forward well that's good as the rest of your life is falling apart you're like well at least i have this <laughs> <laughs> at least shit worked out for him um which are you picking Zack snyder's metropolis circa man of steel or uh the anywhere in the marvel universe circa the end of infinity war uh, I, I'll, circa snap i'm answering mcu and here's why is because like even though like alien like invasions and shit like that have become routine in that mm. universe and stuff there's jokes there, there there's some bright colors and stuff like that i love the snyderverse i don't want to live in the snyderverse man like that's things are very life and death and reminds me a lot of like church and like like you know what i mean like like and, and, and honestly it's probably Put that like, on a poster I reminds mean, me a lot of dot 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 <laughs> church <laughs> it's like oh man we are gonna have to answer for for our our, our shortcomings in this life that's how snyder <laughs> feels like you know what i mean like at, at worst like yeah i got blipped and yeah taylor's married somebody else that's a bummer but like i we could have like ant-man like buddy recount the last five years to me and stuff like, that's I'd, true I'd, I'd oh have my a god that, for that maybe. alone yeah to have it told you in, the, in that quick fucking fun uh I'm going to call it the Peyton Reed style. I like it. Yeah. Because that's who's responsible Love me for some Peyton it. I know Reed. everyone wants to give uh, oh, is it Michael Pena mm-hmm. credit. Well performed. I ain't taking anything away. But let's be honest. It begins with the word. <laughs> and the word was Peyton Reed. I'm going to bring it on, boy. I tried to, <laughs> tried and true. We're all bringing it on, boys. <laughs> let's be honest. Um, the uh, closing thoughts on Zack Snyder's Justice League, gentlemen. Uh, an event... Uh, so big that uh, it's probably up there with um, I- I- Infinity War, which is saying a lot because it took fucking Marvel 10 years to get to Infinity right. War. But like this became such an insanely talked about event. And we're not comparing quality or anything like that. But as big as that movie in terms of like where it's what kind of fucking how much movement on the pop culture needle um a seismic event of that that uh, type made closing thoughts gentlemen starting with you jake i we that joke sounded so fucking serious <laughs> <laughs> wrong <laughs> <laughs> jake, what are your thoughts it's very austere very earnest <laughs> um <laughs> luke and i talk about how this is like a uh an easter movie and it reminds Why? me well, we joke about the whole resurrection thing. Luke will get more into that. <laughs> For me, when I was watching it, I got this vibe of like when I was a kid mm. and watching the Ten Commandments. And I was like, how cool is it that instead of doing Cecil B. DeMille's like epic biblical f- features, we have four hour Batman movies that mm. are in slow motion. And like, I mean, Oop. I didn't get to talk about how cool the story was like i love cyborg i love like all of like the story that he told is really cool and also i think it's kind of fucked up that he told a four-hour movie and still there's still so much unanswered there's still like sequels and sequels to be made like we were talking about before so um, as is often the case with auteur driven films so many people uh get left off of the credit list but a lot of credits got got to go to Chris Terrio as well. Sure, I mean um, a, a gentleman no slouch himself who holds an Academy Award right. for the screenplay to Argo, um, and has worked on a Star Wars thing as well. I met him on the set of a Star Wars thing. Oh. Lovely, lovely guy. He knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah, a thing or two about a thing or two. Um, he didn't get sung out enough. There is uh, in that four hour cut. I want to know how long that script was. <sighs> Like literally, script page count. What do you? Th- it's got to be three hundred pages. I mean, without a doubt. If it's a four-hour final cut, yeah. What was the rough? Well, again, I say three hours because the four-hour final cut, a lot of that is slow mo. That's a good point. Like, okay. And, okay. and you know, action sequences, which on a script page, uh, let's say right. you know, fucking um, the big last fucking fight. You know, uh, as as you know, dad is happening. 
lasts five to ten pages. That's a fucking half an hour of that. Movie. Right. Totally. So it, you know, he has a way of extending time in a beautiful way. I wouldn't change anything. But that fucking one of the greatest comic book sequences ever committed to film um, is uh, the Flash meets Iris and fucking saves her from a simple car wreck. Fucking stunning. Watching him turn and his sneakers explode. Um, you know, we've seen time. We've seen Barry and Speed represented in many different forms uh and you know on fucking cw for a long time i was there i know how they do it <laughs> um we've seen it in a, uh you know quicksilver in um uh, right. age voltron we've seen quicksilver in the x-men movies future past yeah. right um and apocalypse uh so you know if you're gonna step up and be like hey now i'm gonna do my version of that it better impress and that sequence impresses the fuck he has a beautiful use of music throughout that entire movie once again that i believe the hbo max uh zack snyder zack snyder's justice league cut got away with in a world where the theatrical version might not have oh i never i didn't even think about. oh come on a studio being like we need hits man like i don't know about all this slow you know fucking moody music you know, we got a fucking Ariana Grande song or whatever the fuck. Or, I mean, for all I know, well, that I mean, song look at is the, an Ariana Grande song. The soundtrack song. to the first um, Suicide Squad where they Bang. they like, destroyed his life. movie and that all of it is just needle drops. It becomes and, like, needle weird... drop music video. Yeah. You're telling me every young kid's ringtone isn't the, the, the song the villagers sing as Aquaman swims away? <laughs> Magic moment. That's when you know... <laughs> You're, you're dealing with a filmmaker who's like, oh, I'm treating this very seriously. Shit, dude. It's like it's like when she wails giving the Chris knife and Dune. I'm like, oh, they're taking this shit seriously. <laughs> when she sniffs a sweater, I'm like, that rocks. Yeah, um, one of my beefs with the movie, though, is that fucking so many people are like, Bruce Wayne. I'm like, what? He's <laughs> one of the most famous fucking human beings on the planet. I mean, granted, they're in the far reaches of Iceland or whatever. Sure. Uh, but then there's somebody, oh, fucking Barry Allen is like, uh, why is this uh, guy I've never met, which I guess is not the same. No, he indicates that he don't even know who Bruce Wayne is, right? Right. He gets, right. He's, he's like, oh, you're Batman. Yeah. That he That's understands. He's like, oh. But he's never heard of or seen Bruce yeah, Wayne. Yeah, that is very, very strange. Um, especially because they kind of establish in BVS that he's like especially like, because in like, that world they throw his identity around like fucking you know they don't care yeah oh my god by the end <laughs> well, of the movie like, spoilers you got fucking Lex Luthor giving it up <laughs> to fucking uh, Deathstroke and shit you're like god damn it everybody knows who he is no wonder like the next iteration had to take place in a dystopian future <laughs> where he's like, look, everybody knew what happens is everybody finds out who Batman is <laughs> and shit goes real bad real quick. Um, back to you, Captain. That's pretty much all I have to say. Other than I'm dying to see the nightmare movie. I've been waiting for, I don't know why there isn't, I mean, maybe you guys have like an actual answer for that. Like why there shouldn't be a nightmare film. Again, it's, but, it's just HBO max going like, Oh my God, give them a whole series called nightmare. Um, and let them tell that whole story. I'm so fascinated by just like out of the four hour movie, there's fucking six minutes where I'm just like, you're blowing my shit away. And then it connects to BVS as well. How well do you remember Man of Steel? I mean, this guy loves a nightmare. Like even in Man of Steel, he's got like the nightmare sequence where like where like he's in like the pile of bones and he's wearing the black suit and stuff. Like yeah. Snyder was like fucking trying sequence. to like oh, that. Look, if that don't look like a comic book cover, nothing does. Oh, it's Him so fucking good. being pulled the down into those skulls. And shit. It's badass, man. Oh, man. And also to be fair, revolutionary in as much as generally speaking, people don't put Superman next to skulls. That's a Batman kind of thing. Totally. So the fucking juxtaposition of him with a fucking like pile of skulls, I thought was really fucking metal. Day of the Dead. And again, too. it's like a guy, a lot of people like, you don't understand Superman, but I'm like, he's just got a different take. I mean, and, uh, I, and that is a fucking stunning image. The more I think about it. It's great. Yeah. It's so weird. Like you're dealing in fantasy already, right? Like, fucking, you're dealing in the unreal. These characters get to do things that most people can't and will never be able to do. And yet, still, there's a, you know, concerted effort to be like, there's an inner life. Like, what if? Imagine if. I'm like, all fucking things imagine if. Yeah. But you're taking time to do imagine if within the imagine if. Uh, kind of inception. 
if you will. <laughs> totally. Setting yourself up for here. I got a pitch for you. So he does Nightmare as a fucking five to ten episode limited series on HBO Max. And it's Zack Snyder. How does he not get everybody back? I think- I'm not conjecturing here. I, or I'm conjecturing here. And without naming names, who don't come back for that? You know what I'm saying? They all love him. Like all of them love Zach. So that's another reason. Because right now, you know, there's folks feel that some cats, like some folks feel that like Henry Cavill's being like, you know, kept away from Superman. And Ben has recently stated that he's like, I don't want to do it anymore. It wasn't fun for me. Um, particularly any sites like the justice league, um, experience, but he loves Zach. And like, if you were like, Hey man, we're going to do this. He came back already Mm -hmm. to do a bit of the nightmare sequence. All that stuff was brand new, including him talking to the Martian Manhunter. So, you know, I'm just saying like, it sounds like it seems has... like an easy way to fucking get the band back together. Right. It... I know Cyborg would be down like a clown. The Ray Fisher man, like he's he he seems like the person that had the most to gain from like the Snyder cut. Like, and he's set up in there too, it, like mean, for for the nightmare world. Absolutely. And I mean, I don't I don't, I've never had a discussion with him about it, but like I wonder like the way it was shot. I wonder what that sequence cost. Like on the Snyder cuz that obviously was shot more recently sure that ps sequence you know shoot the whole fucking way bro they they don't even have to be an action sequence you can literally just have those characters dressed that way yes talking to each other oh uh, yeah about and dire things through. sign me yeah, up on their way up you know what i watched many seasons of the walking dead and that's what they all did it was the walking live too, because there was a lot of walking on that show. There's a lot of we're going to this place. Yeah. And now that we're here, some shit's gonna happen. I will happily watch that bunch of people walking to wherever the fuck they're going oh, yeah. and the conversations they have, which is an inexpensive show. <laughs> but that's the you know, the Kevin Smith version. But I, I want Zack Snyder HBO, are you listening? No, I mean with without a doubt, man, like like look this at low hanging fruit, man. I'm sure these discussions have been I had within see the hall uh, corridors of power, but how do you not? Like it just seems like a recipe for win. Um and it does seem like a recipe for like, you know, bringing the band back together. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, I'd be there with bells on. And, it, dude, it, put everybody in costume and have them talk. Like, everybody talks about Daredevil for the hallway scene, but there's that episode in season two where Punisher just got him chained to the rooftop. That episode's stunning. <laughs> let's just listen to him chat, man. Yeah. Let's talk Let's talk about life or death scenarios there's here. A, there's a book that I'm writing, a comic that I'm writing right now that, um, like, we were starting this issue and, and it was going to have this big action sequence. And I was like, you know what? Like, really what's needed here is a villain and hero need to meet and have a long conversation. (laughs) Hell yeah. And that was, uh, you know, more than like, you know, we got pages and pages of fucking fighting and fucking action and stuff. But like this just felt like, let's just slow shit down for a good old fashioned, you know, what's going to happen here. Your heat moment. Your true oh, romance yes, moment got me bitch. monologuing. You know, yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Sly <laughs> dog. Uh uh-uh. yeah. <laughs> and, and that's my speed, man. I, so I, you give me fucking, you know, Zack Snyder's nightmare, and it's just, you know, basically cosplay conversations with famous people. Who I'm, hey, you got me, but I'm already a subscriber. But who don't fucking join in that Mandalorian that? set? The yeah, big, why not? The big, uh, what is it? An the orb? volume. Yeah, <laughs> shoot against the volume. Like want- he, whatever he did, like it's it's very treated and and whatnot. Like I'm 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 not saying that's oh, cheap. You can fucking do it yourself, but it doesn't look costly, For particularly we if you're not making about. big action sequences. Like the most expensive expensive aspect of that felt like when they did the shots of you know the spaceships Mm -hmm. and then anybody that needed a like a costume like you know a fucking um 
yeah, Sp- Cyborg and also Flash had a bit of a do Oh, he's got that BVS nightmare. So, you know, there's so them, there's some money there on the effects. But other than that, you know, you got Ben in the Nightmare Batman costume. You got fucking Leto literally just wearing like you know some green in his hair he wore out, of Gucci. Focus. <laughs> out of focus out of focus out of focus the whole time and i will i don't give a fuck i'll watch a version of that maybe make it a half an hour every week maybe it's not an hour i'll take an episode just let it help me figure out is he kidding about the reach around i i, I like no line has stuck out <laughs> well, I, look i'm more fascinated by look uh, as much as that line got me intrigued i was like what is that all about <laughs> especially because they cut to ben and ben looks at him I, this in this look. way where you're like there, don't tell people we do that. Like, <laughs> or, that yeah, what, what is being, <laughs> like, I'm so happy what is that you that. I'm like, they are there. Is that a Zach choice or a Ben choice? I think that's a Zach choice. <laughs> I think he's like, let's give him a neutral reaction to that. Copy. Like, don't give him a, like, roll eyes or something like that or fuck you. He's like, let's give him a neutral reaction. But I do feel like um, I, I want to know why the Joker's the key. That is very strange. Well, I'm like, this guy, what is he fucking, what abilities does he have? What does he know? Like, they're setting up for a fucking version of the story that I am intrigued by. And he references, like, timeline, the Joker does. Mm -hmm. He says something about, like, how many timelines or something like that, indicating multiverse. Totally. So, like... There's no reason this doesn't pay off in the Flash movie if we're opening up and there's well, seven different Batman and stuff like that. And Nightmare Batman is one. Without a doubt. I am I making it up? I'm very excited. Yeah. Or right. at the end of BVS, the extended version, doesn't Flash, like... Flash co- pops yeah, out says, of something. Bruce, and talks, Mother, so, I'm too early. Let me fuck your head up. It's not at the end. It's in the it's middle in the of middle. the movie, it's in the dude. Middle. It's like right in the middle of this movie. It That's what I was hoping. Seemingly nothing to do with it. But this movie so would kind of wrap up. And, they, that and was they the left idea it open. for it. They at least acknowledged the third it. movie. If they were ever going to do the third, like a two Justice League was meant to be a two part movie, and it's not even this as the two part movie. This was meant to be part one, first movie, part one and two, and then do another movie as the fucking third movie or whatever and in that movie they were gonna they were building to to that i feel okay. like they've been flirting with injustice for like a decade yeah. like they want to do that storyline so bad but nobody will pull the live action trigger just... well i look i i think he wants to do that story <laughs> Is so that the bad and i bet you dc or warner brothers historically pre hbo max and again that's the big factor here yeah pre hbo max there's one way for them to be in the Zack Snyder business, make a giant ass fucking movie. Sure. Now there's another way where it's like you can make a giant ass series, <clears throat> but it feeds this machine and you know what this costs and what your algorithm is and what you could spend and what it's going to attract and blah, blah, blah. And you can keep the story going. So I, you know, I don't know. It's always easy from the, from the cheap seats. So I was like, just do what we want. Well, <laughs> Disney Plus did real deal shows this year with real deal Marvel heroes and like spent, spent real deal money. They look know? like movies, just long ass movies I mean, cut up. If they if they're doing that, who's to say? I mean, everybody's that's the future, I mean, right that's there. Where it's headed. Everyone like, for years has been like, the future is movies on TV, and you're going to stream their movies right in. It's like, no, the future is like what we're we're living in it right now, where they're like, we're going to give you a Marvel movie spread out over six seven weeks. We're going to give you you know fucking. Uh, uh, Penguin series that precedes or comes after the Batman or I guess comes after that's going to keep you around because we know we're coming back for another the Batman right. sooner or later. Uh, we've got a Peacemaker series. It's unbelievable. Days away. You know, based on uh, the movie we just saw come out in the summertime. Like, it's crazy. Like, the world we live in, the choices they give us. I always talk about what a great time to be alive as a fanboy, as a person who grew up reading these things in the pages and then watching them come to life. Um, that's why I'll take as many iterations as possible. Um, and also, that goes the other way, too. I took some heat online for being like, uh, you know, look, Ben doesn't want to do the movies anymore. So in that world, it makes sense that they turn to Michael Keaton. He's their established Batman. And also, they're trying to do an older Batman so they could do a Batman Beyond thing in Batgirl. Please. And, you know, and some people are like, what the fuck? He, you know, Keaton dick sucker. He, look, you can love the Snyderverse and still love fucking michael keaton is batman too like there are many different ba- there's many batmans in the world many batmans with m- one batman in the world one batman with many faces kids For sure. and so you know that batman is a face that 
pre-existed, but also like fits nicely. They're not replacing Ben with Michael Keaton, just the way they didn't replace Michael Keaton with fucking Ben. Right. Ben has made it clear that he's just like, yeah, I'm, I'm done. And they're like, okay, in a world where we want to go forward with a older Batman, bam, we got this. This is amazing. And for those of us who grew up watching that Batman in theaters, like this is huge, huge. Man, one of those, that Flash movie, that's what I'm excited about. Um, I like this character more based on Zack Snyder's Justice League, uh, Ezra Miller's take on the character. Like in, in Justice League, it was very like, oof. This guy's talking again. I felt like they were ripping Civil War like hard. Like I felt like they were like, oh, what they just did with Peter and Iron Man, do yeah. that. Even though Barry, like, even though the kid looked, a lot, Ezra looked a lot older, and it just was. You know, but just, in 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 Zack Snyder's Justice League, like he plays way better. So much so they're like, I look forward to watching that Flash movie. Yeah, but that Flash movie has got me fucking turgid because like <laughs> you got Ben in it and you got Michael Keaton in it, and that's what we know. Michael Shannon, I've heard, uh, is Zod like, and, comes and, back. and who's his like one of his hench hench women from uh, Man of Steel is, is con- yes is confirmed, I believe, back as well. Like they're gonna do some some multiversal time timeline shit, and, and then mind you, that was all before No Way Home came out. Yeah. So right. now, in a world where we know they were like, and Marvel's like, hey, we're pulling back Doctor Strange and doing reshoots based on the TV show we just did. There's a world where they're like, you know, all right, let's fucking pull that Flash movie right. back and fucking do throw this in or yeah. up this in or up this ante or something like that. And then we all win in that world, except for the – unless it's the filmmaker's idea. If it's not the filmmaker's idea, then that motherfucker don't win. And he's like, oh, my God, I was done. We Literally were done. Just- we're locked. But I'll take as much fucking multiverse shit in there as possible. But point being, I look forward to Michael Keaton – being batman again and it doesn't mean that like i don't fucking dislike the uh, that i dislike the snyderverse or something like that i'm championing fucking coexistence in the world of hbo max no reason why you can't keep that going no reason come to terms come to the table fuck you did it once do it again make the cheap version even i don't care (laughs) i just want to watch them talk to each other um you uh, Luke, closing thoughts on this movie that you absolutely love. Uh, closing thoughts. I mean, like it's a it's a good it's a really good movie uh, to to sit down and watch with. Like I, I mentioned, sort of like healing in mind. I, I'm I'm so taken by like scenes like Martha's Martha Kent scene with Lois, and then it's Martian Manhunter. Yeah, I'm on the floor because you revealed to me it's Martian Manhunter, but I was like already in a puddle of my own tears on that. This is like a woman a woman who's lost her husband telling a woman who's lost her husband well husband to be and it's and it's you know martha's son and like kind of just like sort of breaking down the grieving process and like you know the little beats of like lois like getting her coffee and going every day and going every day and like the patterns people do when they're dealing with loss and stuff like that i'm like this is a comic book movie. We're doing this. Like no. it's, it's just little, little nuances like that. And it's like, if you want your action, you got that too. Um, it, everything about it just really, really like fires on a lot of different cylinders for me. Um, just like, even if you like people smashing into each other in comic book movies, this one's one to throw on, but oh my God, literally just... smashing into each other like that fight. Um, when he attacks the Amazons. Oh my God. It's so good. And he fucking like, like side butts the horse and then fucking picks them all up by the fucking rope and swings them over his shoulder. Like brutal. His Steppenwolf is far more brutal than the Steppenwolf, um, <coughs> we were presented in Justice League. And if just visually speaking, all those spikes, spikes, too, yeah. <laughs> one of the coolest fucking shots in the whole movie is when he's full of arrows and then he flexes and pops them all out. fucking off. Oh, oh without my God, a doubt. it's so badass. Well, you're talking about doing a nightmare show and it's like, uh, you could, you could do DC like story time and do like all those exposition scenes like Diana, like telling me the history and me watching these gods and like from the seas and from the skies and the Amazons fight, like fighting fucking dark side and, and shit like that. Oh my God. Like that, that alone is like its own, its own story, its own movie, something I'd pay good money to see. So like uh, anywhere you chop it up and it's nice that it's chapter wise for that. Like you can find something to, to enjoy and stuff. I do want to like leave with like maybe like some homework for anybody that's listening and like, maybe doesn't really see our perspective or hasn't given these movies a a fair spin in a while. Uh I would, I would, I would ask people to go back and watch man of steel and watch it in mind of like 
Man of Steel up against a f- Phase One of Marvel, and tell me if it doesn't check most of the boxes you get out of Phase One. Maybe not Iron Man One, and, but like I, I, I honestly think that that movie caught a lot of flack when, in fact, it really could have. It really on on the page and on screen, I think, um, was right what it exactly what it needed to be. And also, I, I, it's like it's it's. Um, uh, I, I appreciate what you're doing, but at the same time, it's like, we don't even need to compare it to Marvel. It's its own thing. Sure. Like it's its own distinct, distinct flavor, all tour driven. And that's, what's kind of beautiful about it. When you're like, you know, uh, the Marvel universe is very all tour driven for sure. And that all tour is generally Kevin Feige <laughs> without a doubt. Um, one of my favorite, if not my favorite filmmaker working today, he's telling the longest fucking movie story I've ever seen. And it's, I'm still in. And he, you know, is works with a bunch of great filmmakers to do that. And, you know, um, Zach has a, just a, his own, you know, he's kind of, he's like Kevin Feige. If Kevin Feige actually directed the movies without a doubt, because he's the guy that, created their universe and shaped it and was like this is where this is and this is this and this is the lore and this is the mythology this is how we're carrying it forward Mm -hmm. from movie to movie this movie is spinning off like he's the closest thing that they've had to a kevin feige and he was a, a directing kevin feige why let that asset go I mean, I hear you, man. Dollar bills. It's hard. Like when it's hard to make these movies work, uh, like in a movie theater when your best versions end up not your best versions, but the ideal version of a lot of these flicks have been the longer version we watch on Blu-ray and now we watch on streaming and stuff. So I feel like now we've unlocked the code. Like we're sitting here in 2022 where it's like 10 years ago, Aquaman for some reason is a laughing stock character. Nobody's talking about Superman in my, in my friend group. You know what I mean? And uh, like you know, Zack Snyder is 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 quote unquote divisive. Now he's like king of the he's king of, you know toast of the town, king of the world. Aquaman. Aquaman's the coolest person he's alive. A viable character. It's Momoa. Made a billion bucks. And Superman is is like is back in a big bad way. We had Superman rise from the dead and and on uh, on Justice League and stuff. But we also like Superman and Lois season two starts tonight. And that show's good. Like you yeah. talk about other iterations. It's a and stuff, and it's like, show, CW yeah. show that's on HBO Max. Yeah, yeah, man, it's good. And it's like uh it's like I can watch Black Suit Superman like frost breath and eye laser and do crazy shit against God. And I can also watch a nice family drama with Tyler Hecklin, who's also battling aliens and doing some cool battle and stuff. But you know, you, you, you can do both. And I really appreciate when you get to have the multiverse and stuff like that. It's crazy short, but watching Superman beat the shit out of Steppenwolf is one of the most deeply satisfying superhero movie moments I've ever uh, enjoyed. Like, Oh my God, look at him. And he depicts Superman like it's tough to see his Superman in action because he makes a move as quickly as he would move. Sure. Um, you know, it's absolutely breathtaking, but you know, watching, uh, the, the Trinity come together in BVS is one thing, but watching like fucking justice league flat out murder this motherfucker before sending him back to dark side. And by the way, you know, we could do a half an hour alone on fucking the first cinematic appearance of dark side. <sighs> When he jumps out of the carrier, and yes. just like ravaging, fucking fantastic, people. fucking oh shot, God, and like, then just the view into apocalypse, and like, there's the sod, and there's granny goodness, and there's like an army of fucking, you know, um, parademons waiting to fucking go. Um, you know, it's all there. Table's fucking set. <laughs> just like, like you've got me like chills right now. It's like, oh my god, the parademons they're buried until the mother box awakens them, but Superman's buried, and they can win if Superman doesn't come back from the dead. It's like. Guess what, guys? You made an excellent movie, and I'm here to tell the world, if you haven't seen it, <laughs> Zack Snyder's Justice League on HBO Max. And uh, it's at home, so if you haven't given the four, I mean, most people, I'm sure, listening to this have made the deep dive, but <coughs> we are talking <coughs> about a pop cultural event from last year, not this year, 2022. Fucking weird that it's 2022, <laughs> man. strange, but had, that sure. being said, <coughs> if you haven't watched it yet, that's not COVID, that's weed. If you haven't watched it yet, we hope. <laughs> fingers crossed. Um, if you haven't watched it yet, 
Take the time. If four hours seems intimidating, break it up. He broke it up for you. It's done chapter style. If you watch it on HBO Max, and I think that's the only place you can watch it. I don't think he's legit. They've made it transactional yet. Um, they haven't made a Blu-ray yet? No, you buy the Blu-ray, but it doesn't give you a digital code. They're like, you can only watch this digitally on HBO oh, Max. Oh, that it, makes it's, perfect It's a sense. move. It's a very interesting move. It's, it's power move. Yeah, how they got that, people to join up in the first place. But they, I like they it. break it up, the chapters for you, where you can like fucking do it in nibbles if, if that's how you want to do it. And they're less than an hour. The, yeah, the chapters each are, chapter. They're like 40, 45 minutes. So it is I very know, digestible. Not a way to make it work, too. But to be fair, like uh, watching it from end to end is uh, an experience as well. I watched it by myself the first time when they dropped it that night and then like right after our special and then i watched it with jennifer and that was a real litmus test where you know she'd been watching marvel stuff and she's like what else you got and i was like well do you want to be in like the fucking hip kids yeah. <laughs> do you want to dive into justice League with it? and she absolutely fucking loved it she's like that is so beautiful yeah she loved all the wonder woman stuff and Loved the whole movie. She was into it, man. And like, you know, she didn't, she ain't deep in that mythology. Um, so it, it, it's, it was a cult, pop cultural event of last year, but no less important this year. I know some people are like hot take talking about Zack Snyder's justice league, but, uh, I knew the kids wanted to talk about it. Well, and it's film school, right? Like when I was in film school, it was like, we're two years removed from like, we're, not, we're in the middle of House and House of Cards and learning about it. We're learning. We're watching The Sopranos and studying it. So you know what I mean? Like I don't think if this is, if that's the did they show the you show, guys Sopranos in film school? I swear we had to watch like I had a TV class where I had to watch Sopranos pilot, Breaking Bad, like all these other like current shows that were had just wrapped up and stuff. And that's all to say that like if this is quote unquote a film school podcast, then it's you know this is a, a big enough, significant enough film event for where. Whenever somebody's ready, they can toss it on and Absolutely. learn the lesson where we're, we're, we're laying down. And we also talked about last issue. We're like, we're going to fucking Don't Look Up next episode. So we'll get into uh, Don't Look Up. But uh, we'll jump all over. Basically, the idea is whoever's sitting in the chair, man, we're going to talk about what their passion is. I saw jo Dr. Josh Roush today. I was like, hey, man, we're doing this thing. You want to do an episode? And he picked a movie where I was like, you know what? It ain't new. What flick? But okay, it, I, uh, tease it. Yeah, well, I tease can't it. tease it, but it's one that's very passionate. He's passionate about, and uh, one Peter Jackson's I, King Kong. I know very well. Wow, what a I, fucking! I wish it were grab <laughs> in the universe. We did that flick. That's another one. I hear. I'll leave. I'll give you this much. It's black and white. Okay. Um. So he was. You know, everybody's got one, and usually that movie leads you on to a discussion onto like a director's entire fucking canon and stuff. And I'm sure this ain't the last time we'll talk about Zack Snyder. Um, but, uh, but boy, oh boy, we went long, long and hard on him, man. Uh, there's a lot of love in the room for him and, uh, and for Zack Snyder's justice league. And that was Luke's idea. So give it up for Luke. If you're like, Oh my God, I can't believe they fucking, talked about a movie that came out last year had to we're not well but again like just because we started with licorice pizza which is out now current doesn't mean like you know that and that's what it's gonna be the, the only office. thing it's gonna be is people are gonna sit on a fucking podcast and you're gonna hear some fucking shit yeah and talk about movies which i'm sure is revolutionary on the internet i don't think anyone's thought to talk about movies on the <laughs> internet prior to this also things are very interesting right now in terms of yeah like licorice pizza had an interesting release in theaters i don't think there's a more interesting release uh, than justice league on hbo max because it it was their flagship like buy our app and their and i did buy their app because of it and they have amazing things on the app and i'm not just blowing smoke like yeah, we i like tcm i like comedy central i like i've been watching south park nonstop. you know like it's a great app and then they also have like their original contents really coming through. So yeah. we are talking about what is currently happening, even though the movies from last year, the HBO Max app and what's happening with streaming is like so fucking important. This to film talk school, about. man, like they didn't make no excuses about making you watch fucking Sopranos. No. We ain't making no excuses here. <laughs> no. We'll talk about what we talk about. And, you know, people will be able to see from week to week like, yeah, I fucking go with them on that and sometimes i'm sure they'll be like i don't give a fuck about those people <laughs> but uh that's the beauty of film man you ain't gotta like it all and stuff you should try it all and uh you know if you try it and you're like i hey, ain't for me you get to move on and shit but 
in this very short life, kids, it's very important to extol the virtues of that which you love. And, you know, it's a waste of time to fucking spend time kicking the shit you don't like. Move on. I saw somebody defend it this week online. They're like, art has always involved criticism. And it's like, uh, there's criticism and then there's campaigning against fucking things yeah. because you hate them and shit. And it's like, who's got that kind of fucking time? But there's a currency in it. You can make money on it on the internet. You can get some clicks by mm. hating on shit. But you ain't going to hear any hate here, kids. You're going to hear a lot of love. If you're waiting to tune into Film School Fridays and be like, and this is the one they tear this fucking thing apart, you know, move on, kid. There ain't no wrestling match going on here. Nobody going to get hit by a fucking chair for heaven's sakes <laughs> um it is uh, a celebration of the cinematic arts kids and this week we spent time uh filleting zach snyder and zach snyder's justice league next week i ain't gonna call it just in case it don't wind up in yeah don't mess up adam mckay or do not, or don't look up i was gonna call it do you know i work for him you worked for McKay? Yeah, I, when I interned out here. Uh, he seems like, like a nice guy. He was like, honestly, I met him one time. I drove his Tesla. Shook, he shook my hand with his Oscar award winning writer's fingers. And Bugging everything. Did you feel spent. the magic? We like, oh, yeah. I carried it for a few years. You know, I really, I really he's got like eight it. feet on you too, right? Oh, yeah, so he's tall. a giant, right? He's so tall. <laughs> I couldn't believe it, but now it's like, you know, back then it was like, oh, it's Adam McKay. He's made my favorite comedies, and now he's like Adam fucking McKay, right. Oscar award winner. Like, you know what I mean? It's so cool. What it, Everyone like, shut up. He made an important movie. Oh my god, <laughs> more yeah. than one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's cool, man. Uh, the uh, the good news is on this show, uh, you got a cool ass perspective you maybe didn't th- normally get. Man, boots on the ground, exhibitor. They exhibited the right <laughs> attitude. It's being exhibited. You got to ask yourself that question, man, before you do anything in life. Is it being exhibited? <laughs> it's good. There's rules to live by. Before you make a move in life, before you do something, say something, fucking just always wonder, is this being exhibited? And then, you know, like you won't get caught like fucking well, Christian Bale when he yelled at the guy. Remember that? Yeah, oh, we, oh, we can't. We won't forget about that. We we talk about it. We quote it often. We all heard it. Oh, good for you, Ralph. You prick! An, you prick! An incredible fucking impression of it. <laughs> and by all reports, he seems like a nice guy too. But he just fucking that's a whole episode. Like lost it. That's a whole other episode to talk about. Because just don't trash it. I'll trash your lights if you trash my scene. Don't I get it. Trash my. Do I get you, it. Do I trash your lights? Then don't trash my scene. It's we were so nice all episode. We were so nice all episode. Is, <laughs> I think he, when he came out and he apologized. He went on K-Rock and he was like, look, I was an asshole, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, it's it, it comes down to this. Uh, this is a business full of adult children, people who are paid to make pretend for a living. And creative people, you know, like all babies, are used to getting their way. And when you fucking tell a baby no, fucking shit goes south. And so sometimes if you're not playing right. Yeah, as when we were kids, somebody's like, that playing right. And they just lose it on you and shit. <laughs> you know, fucking the passions flare. I personally have not ever gotten to a place where, like, I've lost it on a set, like, to that degree and that's shit. Good, like that. That's good. That's uh, good. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you know, I've, I've been heated on a set or been like, oh, man, not heated, but more like frustrated that something didn't go my way, but in a real, like, privileged way like you know oh i didn't get the pony i wanted mummy like kind of thing (laughs) so but i you know that is i think his excuse as well was like i'm doing a scene where my emotions are running high which movie was it terminator Terminator. salvation or something like that that's where it falls apart you tell me (laughs) you tell me he's doing a david o russell movie or fucking dark knight i'm like oh yeah 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 i get it but you tell me he's working really hard for mcg yeah that, He's up to 11. That's the other thing, to carry that poor cross. And it's like, what movie did you do it on? He was like, a Mick J movie, mate. <laughs> <laughs> but Bow Reports, like, doesn't sound like that guy normally. He just sounds like a, you know, fucking rocks, dude who yeah. lost it. But more importantly, it was exhibited. It was exhibited. <laughs> so Internationally. As Jake asked, always ask yourself in life, in the British fashion, is it exhibited? <laughs> I'll, that'll keep you in line it, it works <laughs> your words your actions everything your dick don't pull 100%. your dick out without asking yeah is it exhibited important to think about <laughs> very important 
If you learn nothing else from this podcast, <laughs> Film School Fridays, the lesson is, is it exhibited? Uh, there it is, kids. Uh, for Film School Fridays, I'm Kevin Smith. I'm Jake S. Weissman. Lucas Guy Taylor. And you have been schooled. This has been a Smodco Internet production. Sip. Only at Smodcast.com. This is the cat. Greetings, everybody, and welcome to the AKA Ask Kev Anything. Every saga has a 10 year anniversary, ladies and gentlemen, and this is what happens when Jay and Sal Bob get old. I'm Kevin Smith. Kiss him, you!